to an end? Freeloader, huh? I know you're napping around here somewhere. On your feet and back to work already, yeah? Ah, uh, finally. Come on, sunshine. Up and at him. Get up already! <sighs> Sorry, what's going on? What's going on? <sighs> Did your head spring a leak while you were napping? Better see if you can even remember your name. Well, looks like there's hope for you yet. Apologies, friend. I'm all right. Is the battle at hand? Of course it is. Why else would I be standing here? You heard who we're up against, yeah? Gerald's mercenaries. And it'd be one hell of a fight if true, especially if the Ashen Demon is here. Don't like a smidge of what I've heard about that fella. Or was it a woman? Leave it to you to fumble the details. Did you even catch this Ashen Demon's name? Of course I did. It was... I, by the goddess, it's right on the tip of my tongue. That's it. Demon or no demon, our job is to fight and win. <laughs> you sound just like the captain. I know they paid up front, but come on. Well, at least one of you has some courage. You've certainly come a long way since I plucked you from that mountain village. But this battle is about more than just victory. Gerald's team has a sterling reputation. Rumor has it they've never blundered even a single job. But once we put them to rout, we'll finally be the greatest mercenaries in all of Leicester. Enemy activity detected, Captain. Looks like we'll be fighting by moonlight. Mind you don't kill each other in the dark. Wasn't expecting a fight so soon, but I guess there's nothing for it. 
You ready? When this is over, we'll all greet the new dawn together. <laughs> you sure are a cocky little thing. But yeah, all right. I'll be there. All right, let's get down to business. We're up against Gerald's mercenaries. Let's move out! Drive them straight into their graves! Time to see what you're made of! Now, isn't this a sight? You must be the infamous Ashen Demon. I can't wait to tear you apart. This will be the end of the Ashen Demon. No one can beat the Captain. They took out Lasley like she was nothing. I can't believe I'm losing to some damn kid. And Garland's in trouble. I have to reach her before it's too late. No. Just when my dream was finally in sight. You monster. The captain's dead. What are we gonna do now? Stand down or die. We're gonna stand. We're gonna fight. We're gonna avenge the captain! with you. Huh? The cycle of this world. I will not allow it to perish with you. Yeah! <laughs> 
interesting. You're fighting like an entirely different person. But this fight is over. Hey, wait! Why? We've achieved our goal. Your job was to stop us, and you failed. <sighs> Another time, perhaps. Hey, we're not done here! Wait, why am I so tired? Not sure I would have been able to sleep at night with your <laughs> blood on my hands. Ah! Who are you? Ha! Now that is a tricky question. For the moment, why don't you call me Arval? Arval, huh? But for now... Let me speak plain. You are slated to die. Right now, I'm the only thing holding your meager life together. And to be blunt, it's beginning to tire me. Um, thank you? Oh, oh my. That's the first time anyone has ever shown me gratitude. And I must say, I like it very much. Hear me well. You are a crucial piece of this world's cyclical... Yeah, uh, no, this will never do. You're far too groggy to absorb what I'm saying. For now, I needn't tell you how you'll get back on your feet. I need only convince you that you will. Is this a dream? I remember collapsing, but then... You're half right, which also means you're half wrong, but full marks for effort. Still, the important thing is what you do after you wake. And what should that be? Recall, please, how the Ashen Demon bested you, came within an inch of snuffing out your life. If you attempt the fight again the same way, you will reach the same conclusion. This would force me to step in once more, which would be most annoying and also rather counterproductive, if I'm honest. Then I'll get stronger. The woman I am now will seem like a little kid in comparison. And one day, I will surpass the Ashen Demon. I swear it. Indeed. My captain and comrades are dead. The company is finished. So there's only one thing I can do. Start over. Huh. I thought you'd be more sentimental. Did they not take you in? Care for you? Gold's the only thing that ever held us together. And death is something we're all too used to. I never knew my real parents, and I lost the mother who raised me. Partings just come easy to me, I guess. The best way to honor my fallen comrades is by training hard and growing even stronger. Then I'll crush Gerald's mercenaries, and the Ashen Demon with them. That's what I'm going to live for now. Oh, but I like your spirit, though I expected no less from my partner in destiny. I'm sorry, what? Yes, I suppose that was a bit sudden. I should remember, take intimacy in smaller steps. 
The point is that I'm here to guide you, and I promise to help you find the strength to see your dreams realized. Prologue. A Chance Encounter. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a goddess, has existed for uncountable ages. Now, three ruling powers control the land. To the south is a region held for more than a thousand years by the Adrestian Empire. To the north is the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. And to the east, a league of nobles that bends no knee rules the Leicester Alliance. Though once consumed in war, these three powers now exist in relative harmony. Nestled between them is Garrig Mach Monastery, seat of the Church of Saros, the land's widely practiced faith and a power that helps to maintain peace across the continent. Not far from the monastery, at the northern edge of the empire, is a small village called Ramire, and west of this place stretches a forest where a lone mercenary awaits. Hey, wake up! Ugh, how many times must we do this? Get up already! Huh? That's weird. I could have sworn I heard someone calling me. It's still dark out, though. Hello? Yes, I was calling you. Many times, I might add. Come on, I told you not to sneak up on me like that. As if I have a choice. Do you know how many times you would have died by now if not for me? I'll tell you. 22. The three times you leapt off a cliff to quote unquote get tougher saved you. Those five mad attempts to dispatch a horde of monsters by yourself saved you. And tonight, despite my repeated warnings, you took the wrong path and ended up having to sleep on a bed of leaves in the middle of the woods. All right, this was all my fault, and I'm sorry. Strange. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, yet somehow I'm the one who feels bad now. I must remember this tactic. At any rate, we all make a few mistakes along the way. And by we, I mean you. And by a few, I mean far, far more than average. Now then, with that out of the way, would you like to know why I've roused you from your mud-caked slumber? Actually, it's probably easier to show rather than tell at this point. Look over there, if you would. Hmm? Stop plowing ahead, Claude. You're going to get us lost. Lost, schmast. We've got it on Imperial authority that this is the way to the village. <sighs> True, I said there was a village, but how could anyone know where it is in the thick of these mountains? I can't even say for certain where we are in all this gloom. Okay, new plan. I'll rely on my keen senses to navigate. Lucky for you, they're sharp as an arrow. Hold, both of you. Someone's here. Another bandit, perhaps? They're mistaking you for some common backwater thief. What cheek. Well, hold on there. I'm no bandit. I'm a mercenary. Well, that makes everything better. A bandit would be far less out of place in these woods than a sellsword. What brings you here? We've no time for an interrogation. Our pursuers are closing in. I don't know who you people are or what you want, but I think introductions can wait. You clearly need every blade you can find, and my pockets have been feeling awfully light lately. 
What do you say? Well, since you're here, do you mind stepping in and helping us chase off these scary bandits? Don't worry about pain. You'll receive plenty of hope. If we survive, that is. There they are! Kill them all! Fighting for them now, are ya? You can die with your new friends! Deal with things here. Oh, you. Watch this. Let me show you a trick for dealing with heavily defended enemies. Well, I suppose my turn is along. I've awaited this moment. I won't allow anyone to stop me. You're making me feel bad for the enemy. What's wrong with you? They're just a bunch of brats! Stop embarrassing yourself and stand your ground already! Is it clog time? I think it's clog time. Bring it! You know, I'm a master of strategy, but I'm not really used to being on the front lines. Very sharp, Claude, as usual. Hey, you got lucky there. Well, lucky for me, I guess. Not so much for you. The bandits have a firm hold on the central road. It would be wise to move through the forest and take down the strongholds as we go. Try and keep an eye on who we're fighting, and make sure we've got the right person leading the charge at the right time. Battle to unravel their defenses? Enough of this strategy nonsense! Get out there and tear them all to pieces! Okay, how many thugs does this guy have working for him anyway? Repent, foul bandits! The Knights of Seros are here, and we'll cut you down for terrorizing our students. It's practically one if the knights have arrived. The knights of Saros! Not now! If I don't kill at least one of them, Brad, I'm finished! Here it comes! Watch out! They're gonna make a last-ditch effort to rush our position. This is where you die, dogs! Form ranks and capture those bandits. Quickly now. Do you feel that power? Maybe you can channel it like you did in the other battle. That's not done yet. You're gonna learn how dumb a bandit can really be. And we cannot allow ourselves to perish here. I'm afraid we must spare no mercy for you. I never should have taken this job. Is it over? Hang on. You're seriously the Imperial Princess, the Crown Prince, and the heir to the Alliance? Yes. And as the three of us are now in your debt, I think formal introductions are in order. My name is Edelgard von Hressbelk, Princess of the Adrestian Empire. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And I'm Claude von Regan, grandson of the leader of the Leicester Alliance. Things looked grim there for a moment. Thanks to you, we put those bandits to flight. Bit of a miracle we ran into you out there, but hey, I'll take it. Hey, I only fought well because I had such fine companions by my side. 
There may be some truth to that. I can't shake the feeling that we were destined to meet somehow. Well, aren't they an unlikely trio? I wonder why those bandits were after them. Still, it's no concern of ours. We have our own plans to attend to. Now, collect your pay and be off before they get a wild idea and ask you to join them. Say, while I have you here... Do you know where I can find Ramayar Village? I took a wrong turn somewhere along the way. I'm looking for a band of hardened mercenaries who follow a man named Gerald. I hear rumors that's where they're camped. Actually, Ramayar might just be the village we've been looking for, too. That ring a bell, Edelgard? I don't remember hearing anything about Mercs, but... The name sounds correct, at least. Gerald's too smart to get smoked out by a bunch of rumors, but they're all I've got at the moment. In any case, we won't find our own two feet in all this dark. We should return to camp and get our bearings before... Hello there, house leaders. Hello, brave mercenary. We've mopped up what's left of those rascals, so what say we return to camp? And I insist you accompany us, good mercenary. Who, me? You heard the man. We'll wait out the night together and make for the village in the morning. It's a great plan, especially if you want to get paid, as we're a tiny bit short on pocket change at the moment. Yes, and those mercenaries you're looking for? Gerald's band, was it? They may be in Ramar village tonight, but there's no telling when they'll move on. If you come back to our camp, we have maps that may help you get one step ahead of them. This is clearly the wisest course of action, not to mention that I would enjoy conversing with you further. But of course, the choice is yours. Ugh, why can't things ever be simple? All right, but just for the night. Perfect. Then might I borrow you for a moment after we reach camp? There's a matter we must speak about. Nothing alarming, I promise you. Right then, so off we go. But, um, if I may, did I hear you mention a Gerald earlier? Yes, do you know him? He heads up a pretty elite band of mercenaries. So I imagine his name has spread all over Fodlin by now. Mercenaries, is it? No. No, it can't be him. Can it? Well, I'll just have to meet this Gerald myself. After I've seen my duties through, of course. After all, if I don't finish my assigned tasks, I'm mission the point. Get it? Missing? Mission? Come now, this is good stuff! <laughs> That's our Aloise. Come on, let's get moving before he really gets going. I'm honest. That's concerning. What say you?
Thanks. Hmm. Speaking of... How's that? Who, me? I'm more curious about you, personally. If you don't have anything better to do, I'd be glad to have you join us at Garrick Mach. What do you think? Another matter. Well, you're certainly not timid. You do realize you're addressing the heir to the Imperial Throne, yes? Still, I suppose I admire that sort of freedom. It must be nice not to have your lot in life decided for you. Well, you're certainly not timid. You'd still... You have my thanks. Speaking of which... Thanks! <laughs> By the way... about this <laughs> your interest flatters me but I'm afraid I find myself unsure of where to begin perhaps I'll have thought of a topic when next we speak but uh, you're leaving for that village soon aren't you That's concerning. If I'm honest. My sincere apologies for asking this of you. I know you're heading for Ramire Village in order to find Gerald's mercenaries, but... Well... Perhaps you might consider changing your mind and accompanying us to Garagmach Monastery instead. And why would I do that exactly? 
because you've done us a great service and we don't have the means in camp to properly reward you. At the monastery, however, we can repay your kindness in full. Also, between you and me, this evening's turn of events was quite the embarrassment for the church. We allowed students of the Officers' Academy out of our sight, and house leaders of great political consequence at that. And then they crossed swords with bandits. If word got out, well, let's just say it would sit poorly with everyone. So you see why we must ensure you are well compensated. Also, there may be some papers for you to sign. Perhaps in blood. This sounds more like hush money than a reward. Yes, that's exactly what I told the fool knight who suggested it. Me, I'd just as soon send you on your way, but I fear I'm obligated to escort you back. Anyway, the whole thing will be much easier if you simply agree to come along. Just as a formality, of course. I think that was a threat. And here I thought he was a big softy. Well, what do you think? Garrick Mock is in the opposite direction of where we need to be, but this man seems rather set on having us accompany them. I guess I'm not opposed to helping out a little more. I'll come with you to the monastery, but I'm not staying a single minute longer than I have to. Bless you, my friend. What a noble soul you are. I'd say you saved my bacon, but that would be utterly hammy. Alois, has anyone ever told you that you're... Don't. Some truths are simply too painful to bear. While I'm no expert, I fear the poor man's heart couldn't handle the shock. Hmm? Told me what? Told you how dashing you are in that armor. <laughs> Not just any man can pull off that look. Ah, you like it? Wonderful. I admit I've received no small share of positive comments on it. There's a grand story behind every last ding and dent. Enough to keep me talking for a week. Why, take this one here. We heard you'll be joining us at Garrick Mock. Perhaps somewhat unwillingly, I might add? I know this wasn't in your plans, but if it lets us get to know each other better, perhaps it will prove worth it in the end. Unwilling or not, we've got a long road ahead, so let's try to keep the mood light. I hesitate to ask this considering you're only here because of us, but... Well, are you sure about this decision? The last thing we want is to delay you from your own business. The knights may seem unwilling to bend, but it's not as if you have no say in the matter. Actually, I see this as just another chance to better myself. You are more gracious than I. But, as I see you've made peace with it, I will leave the matter be. Yes, yes, that's quite enough chatter. Let's save our energy for the road. To the monastery! Listen, I know this one's on me. I'm the one who roped you into coming back to camp, after all. But I'll find a way to make it up to you, I promise. Thanks, Claude. I know you will. Hey! Hurry up back there, or we'll leave you behind! You know you've had a busy day when you rub shoulders with the heirs to the Empire, the Kingdom, and the Alliance. I think they're a fascinating group of people myself, but what do you make of them? It feels like Dimitri's always checking in on me every chance he gets. He'll definitely make a good king. The kind who looks after his people. Seems like Edelgard thinks high enough of me. She's got this elegant air about her, but somehow doesn't hold any disdain for mercenaries. 
Scott's a laid-back kind of guy who doesn't really strike me as noble, and I mean that in a good way. Something tells me he's going to be easy to work with. <laughs> of course, you only pick up on their rosy qualities. You really are a delight. Have I told you that lately? Still, you'd better pick up the pace before you vex these people any further. Prologue. Three Houses. Deep in the forest, the mercenary meets a trio of youths, each a student at Gehrig Mach's Officers Academy and a leader of one of the school's three houses. Striking down the bandit chief who attacked the students brings undue attention to the mercenary, who soon arrives at the hallowed gates of Gehrig Mach. And with that, may I present the mercenary I spoke of. Greetings. My name is Rhea, and I am the Archbishop of the Church of Seros. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for rescuing our students. I'm just glad I could help. Such modesty is not required around me. Your actions were truly commendable. However, the reason we summoned you here was not simply to express our gratitude. We have a proposal for you. One made on behalf of the church itself. What kind of proposal? Someone told you of the officer's academy here at the monastery, yes? We would have you join this academy as a student. You what? Though you are a mercenary, I understand you are not currently beholden to any one particular employer. Also, the students you rescued are close to your own age. Your life could be greatly enriched here. Or she's heard about our power and wants to keep us on a short leash. And yet she's taking it almost as a given that we'll accept. It's infuriating. I need to get stronger if I'm gonna do what I need to. If your fancy school can really make that happen, consider me interested. The Knights of Seros, as well as many other powerful warriors, pass daily through the gates of this hallowed monastery. If strength is what you are after, we can certainly provide it in spades. They've really talked us into a corner here. I think I see where this is going. All right, I'm in. A wise decision. We will do all we can to ensure you do not regret it. I believe you will go far. If I may, permit me to tell you a bit more about the school itself. The academy is divided into three houses and draws in the most promising young talents from every corner of Fodlan. Some are noble-born, while others spring from more humble roots. But within these walls, all are treated as equals. We ask our prospects to spend a year living under the same dormitory roof so they can challenge each other, work hard, and grow together. Each of our houses corresponds to one of Fodlin's three regions. Edelgard leads the Black Eagle House, which is for students from the Adrestian Empire. Dimitri leads the Blue Lion House, home to students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And Claude leads the Golden Deer House, for students from the Leicester Alliance. 
We could select a house for you ourselves, but as all of this was our idea, perhaps we should leave this decision to you. You are something of a special case, after all. So I can join any house I want? Yes, you have simply to name it. So you wish to join Edelgard's Black Eagles. Are you certain? Yep, that's the one. I'm sure of it. May you build wonderful and lasting friendships in your new house. Well then, with that taken care of, it's time to decide which of us will supervise which house. Yes, it turns out we just underwent a last-minute roster change. I guess you two haven't met. This is Professor Yuritsa, our weapons instructor. Hello. I can already tell I'm gonna learn a lot from you. Will you now? Do my ears deceive me? Or is that curiosity I hear in your voice, Professor Yuritsa? I thought all the houses were the same to you. Perhaps you should be in charge of our new student's house, hmm? I don't care. You decide. Well, you'll certainly hear no objections from me. Professor Manuela, you and I can take charge of the remaining houses. What? It's decided already? I was at least expecting a fight. Maybe some hair pulling? And as for you, my mysterious new student, I look forward to getting to know you much, much better throughout the year. The gall of these people making decisions for you. It's enough to make one's head spin. Uh, right. In any case, I'm looking forward to learning from you, Professor Yuritsa. I'll inform you of our first mission soon. Sorry, what mission? Oh, did we fail to mention that? Each month, every house in the Academy is given a mission entailing some form of service to the Church. Well, what do you think? I believe there is a very good chance it will work. Perhaps, Lady Edelgard. But is that chance not outweighed by the danger of matters going awry? We have managed to walk the nice edge so far, but what you are suggesting is open hostility. If they so much as catch wind of our intentions, things will go sideways very quickly. Regardless, this is our last opportunity to save her. Frankly, it's a miracle we even have the chance. I thought you once proclaimed not to believe in miracles, Lady Edelgard. And I don't. At least not the kind one has to sit around and wait for. But right now, everyone is exactly where we need them. Her, the bandits, the string pullers, and the perfect instructor with the perfect mission. I'm going to make this miracle happen, and I will do so for our future. Hmm. Then we'd best have a plan in place to finish the job, in case they catch on. I expected you to burn a few bridges, but this plan would be akin to setting half the countryside on fire. Which is exactly why I'm counting on you, Hubert, and why I'm grateful to have you by my side. Welcome to the Black Eagle House. I'm pleased you selected us. Whoa, wait, what? You're a student now? And not only that, you're one of us? That's great! Wait, stop! I don't know this person! Oh, 
Why are there so many new faces? That's what you get for skipping this year's first field excursion burn. A lot happened. There was even a bandit attack. Did you really not hear about any of this? Bandits? Ugh! Now I'm extra glad I skipped out. I must say, the church took a bold step in enrolling you. A decision which I, of course, fully support. You helped Edelgard, and we stand to learn quite a bit from one so skilled. Yes, I have eagerness to examine the fighting of mercenaries. We should be sparring, one versus one. If anyone needs me, I'll be asleep and... Wait, hold on. Do you have a crest? Did Professor Hanneman even check? Oh, he checked all right. Sorry to say I'm certifiably crestless. Strange. You definitely seem the type. But I suppose I'm just imagining it. And now you know the rest of our house. As you already met some of us in camp, I assume you knew what you were getting into. We may not be perfect, but we support each other as best we can. Please try your utmost to get along with everyone. Here approaches Professor Yuritsa. That makes all of us. Remember your mission? We are to eliminate the remaining members of the Iron King's thieves that attacked our camp. The chief, Costas, has already been struck down, and now only a scattering of brigands remain. Even with our limited experience, we should be able to defeat them handily. Good. Prepare yourself. Of course, Professor. Oh, he's gone. So it would seem. Right then. We'd better get all of our waterfowl in a row. Wait, but I. I need to tell the Professor I can't participate? Oh, good work, Bernie. Why didn't you speak up sooner? I know what you mean. I never even got the chance to break out my best. Leave it to me, Professor. He's a real tough nut, that's for sure. Says just as much as he has to, then makes tracks. Well, the less you say, the greater your mystique. <laughs> True enough. There's not much charm in someone who talks your ear off at every opportunity. Whatever the case, I expect all Black Eagles to participate in this mission, including you, Bernadetta. You can do this. And I look forward to seeing our mercenary friend here in action. I won't let you down. There you are, Yuritsa. I have word from the knights. It is time? Yes. The bandits have fled north into the canyon bordering Count Rose land in the kingdom. But the knights have cut off their escape, and now stand ready to provide whatever support the students may require. We'll leave at once. I needn't remind you this is the first real battle for some of our charges. I trust you will keep them safe, though I likely do not need to worry with an old hand like you at their side. No, you don't. You there, it's time for the mission. Gather the others. About time we saw some action. Lost sight of them? A shame to admit it, but yes. It's possible someone magicked the bandits away. But why go to that kind of trouble for a handful of highwaymen scum? So be it. We'll follow the blood scent. Right, of course. We'll follow... Wait, what? 
We're leaving. Everyone, follow me. Professor, wait! Well, he must have some idea where the bandits went. Let's hurry after him. Pathetic. Professor Yuritsa, you shouldn't charge ahead like that. It's far too dangerous. Wait, what is all this? <laughs> Bandits! Dead by my hand. Yes, they look quite dead indeed. Are these the miscreants we were meant to deal with? How is one to tell? One uncouth ruffian looks much the same as any other. Do you know, Professor? Were you following some manner of lead? No, but it's them. They were trying to escape to that fortress. That fortress? Yes, Kaspar, that's what he said. Something you want to share? Nope. It just seems suspicious. You are something else, Kaspar. Still, I guess the place does look kind of suspicious. We're near the border of the Kingdom and the Empire, but that is no Imperial outpost. It's not the Kingdoms either, and they're not flying any kind of banner. I'm guessing it's a bandit hideout. Then give us allowance to be storming their base and crushing them under our feet. It might be a little dangerous for us to handle on our own, Petra. Yes! I mean, I agree. We should all, um, go home. Right now. But the bandits might be inside, and they must answer for their crimes. It is our noble duty to finish them off before they can bring harm to another soul. This isn't about nobles. It's about doing the right thing, period. And striking down evil is the Caspar way. We'll be heroes if we manage to take out an entire bandit outpost. This is the kind of stuff I live for. Since when are you so gung-ho? Oh, right. Since always. Enough. This is not our decision to make. Professor Yuritsa? The mission stands. Enter the fortress. Dispatch any bandits you find. There are no signs of life. We may be chasing ghosts. Professor, are you having the ability to speak with ghost spirits? It is just an expression, Petra. It means there is probably no one here. Ah, I am understanding now. You have my thanks. This language has much peculiarity some of the times. Well, if that's settled, let us make ready. Make sure you're prepared before we head out. We'll put the bandits to rout. Follow me. This place is bigger than I thought. Split up. All of these dead bodies are enough to numb the senses. <sighs> this is certainly not what we signed up for. I'd say that takes care of securing the bandit hideout. Unless something else concerns you, Professor. Search the basement. Something is amiss. Hey, there's a prisoner down here. She looks like an academy student? Are you here to rescue me? Lady Edelgard! Monica, how did you... No, my questions can wait. Thank you for saving me. It's not safe here. We must take the girl and run. Okay, we should be safe here. I mean, I hope we are at least. All right. Who came in here and trashed my beautiful stronghold? Hi there, I'm Kranya, 
But you can just call me the lady that's about to murder you. Or, you know, don't. It's her. So be it. Kill her. Then it is you who will die this day. Good. Then we can proceed as planned. So, if you've got any pretty last words lined up, now would be the time. Not that I'm going to pay attention. Oh, you're not going anywhere, Monica. I have something very special planned for you. Alright, you asked for it. Release the creature we captured. This is going to be trouble. On your guards, everyone! Out of the way! You're done! I am your man! Attacking force! I will never defeat it alone! All the numbers in the world won't save you. This is unlike any beast I have ever encountered. It will be a grueling battle unless we combine our strength. Its strength is beginning to wane. Press the attack. I am here to aid you. They defeated a demonic beast? Impossible! Hollis isn't going to like this at all. You'll pay for this. You'll all pay! That snake escaped. But still, Monica is safe, and that's what matters. Oh, I thought I would never breathe fresh air again for as long as I lived. I'm not sure what to say, except... Thank you, everyone. How did you end up in such an awful place, Monica? I heard you went missing in House Ox territory. I did indeed. In fact, I was on the verge of graduation when I was kidnapped by the strangest people. Oh, how silly of me not to introduce myself. I'm Monica Von Ox. I'm the eldest child of Baron Ox, and one of your highness's most loyal subjects. Seeing as you saved my life, I plan to devote that very life back to helping your cause. You've not changed at all, though I do appreciate the enthusiasm. Monica was a Black Eagle in last year's class. One might say she's part of the Old Guard. I'm not sure how I feel about you calling people old. I think I understand. This all began when the Knights lost sight of the bandits and you gave chase. Afterward, you entered a suspicious fortress and rescued a missing student. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll be sure to smooth things over for you once we're back. Sounds good. But, uh, why are you even here, Alois? Because the Knights sent for help after you left them behind. Did you expect anything different? Not that I'm trying to lay blame at your feet. I know you were following Professor Yuritsa's lead, so I think everyone involved can head home knowing they did just swell. For as you know, all swell that ends swell. <sighs> Still... I find this a rather grave turn of events. To think the same bandits who attacked our charges were behind another student's abduction. Hmm? I never said I was kidnapped by bandits. You... you didn't? Now that I think on it, not everyone in that fortress was dressed like a common rogue. Perhaps the bandits were mere decoys while some other villain pulled strings behind the scenes. Yeah, 
there was one real piece of work. Kranya, I think, who managed to escape. I've seen all kinds of people as a mercenary, and she was definitely not your everyday bandit. You're on the right path. Perhaps I should just tell you who kidnapped me, seeing as I already know. What? Why didn't you mention this earlier? Everyone was busy speculating, so it was difficult to cut in. What do you know, child? Out with it. Her Highness can vouch for this, but my memory is quite strong. Try Remarkable. You never forget a face, even one seen only at a glance. Your Highness, I... um... thank you for the compliment. <clears throat> I'm certain of what I saw. The one who kidnapped me was surely Tomas the Librarian. Tomas? Impossible! But Tomas has been at Garrick Mark even longer than I have. I don't want to believe it, but based on what you say, we've no choice but to investigate. But, Sir Alois... Be on guard. If Tomas is in league with Kranya, he is dangerous. Very well. I will quietly report the matter to Lady Rhea and leave the decision in her hands. Not a word of this to anyone. Is that clear? Well, now things are getting interesting. Honestly, did not see this coming. So what do you make of this Kranya? Why do you think she was at the fortress? You seem preoccupied with her during the battle. Is she a friend of yours? Sadly, I wouldn't know. My memory is but a shadow at this point. Gone! Vanished! Lost! I remember meeting you, but before that, nothing at all. And yet, the moment I saw her, I was struck with the most inexplicable feeling. I couldn't tell you if it was revulsion or affection. It was simply pure emotion. And here I thought I had it tough. Are you worried about me? How adorable! Oh, but I do love that about you. And so, the Archbishop has elected to apprehend Tomas. He has been away from Garrig Mach for days now. During his absence, an investigation of his behavior and personal effects laid bare his hostility to the Church. The Knights have been instructed to await his return and take him in. As quietly as possible, of course. We want him alive. So we might discover the whereabouts of his associates. I'm glad they actually believed me. If they doubted you, you would have known it the moment they clapped you in irons and led you away. So who is this Tomas guy anyway? You say he works in the library? He does. I've lost track of how many times I've spoken to the man. No surprise, Lin. You practically live at the library. Um, so what did he look like again? Is he the big, burly one? Burly? Not even close! He's a frail old man with a walking stick. From what I understand, he's been at Garrick Mach for 40 years, at least. It is hard to imagine that he had been plotting evil that whole time. I wonder what led to his transformation. Transformation? Would someone not be noticing if Tomas changed his appearance? He meant a mental transformation, not a physical one. Tomas must have changed his mind about the church at some point. I am excited to have learning of this strange new expression. I must be thanking you. If they were really worried about transformations, you'd expect they would turn their gaze to you. Good to know they're nice enough not to do so. So, this Tomas person sent the bandits after us? What an awful man. We're lucky to be alive. You're one to talk, Bernadetta. You weren't even there. 
Yes. You were not having reason to fear for your continued living. Uh, you're right! Everyone, pipe down! Something's happening outside. Are they ready at the gates? Yes, sir. Every exit is covered. Well, well. It sounds like Tomas has returned. I don't know why I know this, but you need to get out there, and quickly! I think Tomas is here. I, uh, I'll be right back! Wait, we should discuss this before you... <sighs> Never mind. There he is! <laughs> That man down there. Lady Rhea wants to speak with you. I suggest you accept. Hmm. This doddering persona of mine will benefit me no further. What is this? Vermin, you will pay for this. Find him! Right! And what he did was just like... Prologue. The Shadows of Adrestia. Upon his return to Garrig Mach, the humble Tomas shapeshifts and flees, and not even the Knights of Ceres' most concerted efforts can track down the erstwhile librarian. Meanwhile, Edelgard seizes upon Monica's rescue as a chance to start down a radically different path than she had originally planned. Things went like clockwork with Monica. Thanks to Professor Yuritsa playing his part so ably. And equally to those arrogant fools for letting their guards down. I doubt we will see such fortune next time. Next time? Oh, don't tell me. The moment has come to take matters into our own hands at the Imperial Capital. This is our chance to finally be rid of them. But Lady Edelgard... We aren't ready. We'll need an entire host to keep them in check. And we have one. The Church. Forgive my impertinence, but that is not the plan. You are the man who once told me to leave no sword in its scabbard. Yes, but one must also take care not to wound themselves when unsheathing it. I'm sorry, my lady. But this plan is ill-advised. I cannot support it. And even if I were to ignore common sense and go along, it still throws our future plans into disarray. I thought you devised countermeasures to deal with the Church. Use them. But those were meant for... Very well. Are you absolutely certain this is the path? I am anything but certain. Yet the bandit attack in the mountains created an opportunity we cannot ignore. And I doubt the appearance of this new mercenary is simple coincidence. Plans can be rewritten, Hubert. Either we're doing this, or we're not. Will you sit around and wait for a miracle? Or will you help me seize control of my fate? I am with you, Lady Edelgard. As ever. Then let us walk forward on this path. And see where it takes us. 
apologize for bringing this to you on such short notice, Archbishop. Not at all, my Edelgard. But might I ask, what prompted this sudden desire to return to Enbar? We believe one of Tomas's collaborators may have infiltrated the capital. My word! Tomas tended the library at Garrig Mach for decades, with nary a blemish on his record. And then, without warning, he drops his disguise and reveals himself to be a vile sorcerer of terrible ability. Someone at the Capitol also fits that pattern. A man we know all too well. And who might that be? My uncle, and regent of the Empire. Bokard von Arendal. His lordship briefly defected from the Empire before reappearing several years later. But he returned a changed man, and began seizing power almost immediately. Witnesses claim he wields dark magic in secret, and is able to change his appearance at will. That does sound suspicious, if these witnesses can be believed. I would ask that you do believe them, as the information comes from my own House Vestra. I see. And when you return to the capital, how do you propose to deal with this uncle of yours? Lord Arendal has the support of a number of influential nobles, including the Prime Minister, Duke Eyer. And while we have allies of our own, it's likely they'll require some convincing. To that end, we wish to bring our friends here at the Academy, their daughters and sons, with us under the supervision of Professor Yuritsa. We hoped you would consider deploying the Knights of Seros, so the Imperial Army doesn't get any strange ideas. You wish to march on the Empire, with the Church's Knights at your back? Your support would give credence to our claims. Additionally, the Knights would keep the populace in check upon our arrival, thereby preventing the city from descending into utter chaos. The more I hear of this, the more credible the threat sounds. It's clear you have thought carefully and planned well. We intend to seize the palace with our own forces, and we'll do our utmost to contain the conflict there. But we still need your help. Please. I have two conditions. The first, when you capture Lord Arundel, he is to be turned over to the knights at once. The second, our knights are not to engage in battle directly. I would have it no other way. Step lightly, Edelgard. Should these claims about Lord Arundel prove false, we will take action accordingly. Make no mistake as to who will be held accountable. Understood. But please know we have nothing to gain from deceiving the Church. Very well. I will summon the Knights and let you instruct them as to your plan. May the Goddess watch over you all. Well, that was certainly an unexpected conclusion to the whole Tomas saga. Thanks to his shape-shifting ability, he slipped free of the knights and escaped. Shape-shifting. Yes, that's what I said. Also, I know what you want to say next. His powers are just like the ones you gave me. His powers are just like the ones you gave me. Are you in league with him, Arval? Where did these powers come from? If I am in league with him, no one has informed me. All I have is you, my dear partner in destiny. Still, I saw what you saw. Clearly, we don't have a monopoly on shapeshifting. And now that everyone knows about Tomas, some of them must have connected the dots back to me. At least they've had the grace to keep it to themselves. 
It's because they trust you. Hold on, someone's coming. Ah, there you are. Something wrong? I must return to the Imperial capital soon for an important matter. Will you join me? Most of the other Black Eagles are coming. What's this about? I fear I must keep that to myself until we're closer to the capital. But I promise you this. There will be battle, and you will have a chance to shine. Are you sure? I mean, these powers I have... Are like the ones Tomas used? Yes, that is a bit disquieting. Still, you've given me no reason to mistrust you. You could have wrested yourself free of us from the start, but instead you chose to stay here at the monastery. You fought by our side and helped us save Monica. I think I can give you the benefit of the doubt. But here's my true proposal. If you accompany us, there's a good chance you'll learn where your powers come from. Ooh, now that is intriguing. In that case, I accept. Thanks. If you would, do you have a moment? If I may. My word is a bond. Hmm. <laughs> 
So basically... <laughs> Hello. What do you think? Solon's been unmasked. Yes, my lord. Rooted right out of the monastery. First Kranya's debacle and now this. What in the world is going on? I know not, my lord. What are we to do? Keep our composure for a start. Send word to the kingdom and see that Cleobulus is informed. Tell him to remain prudent. If he must go into hiding, so be it. At once, my lord. Yes? Lord Regent, I have urgent tidings to report. You may enter. Forgive the intrusion, my lord, but we just learned the Knights of Seros march on Enbar. Their purpose is unclear, but they will arrive by morning. We've been turning ourselves upside down to make ready. The Knights of Seros? No. Oh. Do you think... There's only one person who could be behind it. How dare she bear her fangs at us? They may already be within the palace walls. Mobilize the guards and search. If anyone so much as looks at you askance, kill them on the spot. Yes, my lord. Her Highness has given the signal, Baldemar. Already? I had thought they were still negotiating. Things are moving rather quickly. The situation must have changed. Our children are still at Garrick Mark, after all. I admire how strong she's become. I just wish we'd had more time to appraise her competence. Well, if she's caught us with our breaches down, imagine how they feel. I can't wait to see the confused look on those dastards' faces. Oh, I'm going to enjoy every second of this. As if you'd be content to watch. Once the battle starts, you'll be knee-deep in gore with all the rest. Which means... I'll have to make it clear where I stand. We can't afford to tear the Ministry apart by having the pen and sword at odds. These are your instructions. I imagine they may not come as a surprise to many of you. For some time now, Enbar Palace has been infested with the same darkness you saw in Tomas. They have made a puppet of the Emperor, and plot with disloyal subjects to seize control of the Empire. Our objective is to stamp these traitors out, seize the palace, and reclaim the Empire for our own. Um, you realize it's just us, right, Adi? That sounds kind of... impossible. Still, the Empire is having many soldiers. Perhaps you could be changing their minds? 
Those who can be won over will be. And the realization they are fighting the Imperial Princess ought to dull the other's blades. We have also secured the cooperation of several nobles inside the palace. Very impressive, Your Highness. And very you. I suppose all that remains is to head inside and take care of business. Just you watch. We'll take them all down and have the bards singing our names by nightfall. So here we are, ready to deal a masterstroke to the heart of the mighty Empire. Life with you certainly isn't boring. We'll infiltrate the palace through the rear gate, then apprehend Lord Arundel and Duke Iyer. From there, we'll secure the palace's strategic positions, eliminating all resistance we encounter along the way. If that is our plan, then time cannot be wasted. You can hear them scrambling in the palace from here. Let's not wait for them to find their bearings. Lead the way, Your Highness. Oh, and make sure to keep her safe, Hubert. You know every square inch of that place, after all. Just mind you don't fall prey to your own distractions. These villains have had free run of my house for too long. Today, I take it all back! It was easy enough slipping in the back. The knight's unexpected visit must have thrown the court into disarray. In that case, we'd best find and apprehend Duke Iyer and Lord Arendel before they grow wise to our scheme. Duke Iyer should be in the front now. He'll enter through the back way. Surrender, Duke Iyer. What in the... No! Seal the gate now! Well, this complicates things. We'll have to cut around through the gardens. Send soldiers to the gardens! I want a sword on every path between myself and those rats. The man is so desperate he doesn't realize he's already lost. So let us break through and prove it to him. Um, Amy, no offense, but what's to stop him from running away? Oh, I already solved that particular problem. The time has come, ministers. Show the Duke your true allegiance lies with the Empire. Apologies, Ludwig, but if you want to leave, it'll have to be through me. And if you want back in, you must go through me. Although I must seem like nothing in comparison to that bear at the front gates. <laughs> you would turn on me now. Preposterous. Wait, so those are the nobles you won over? Where'd you find the time to orchestrate that? Now that we have Dugaya pinned down, let us clip his wings. No! You're still outnumbered, and this isn't done until I say it is. It's for good. It's finished, Prime Minister. Lay down your arms and surrender peacefully. Who's the fire orbs? I don't care if you bring the palace down around us. Just do it! They're shooting at us? We should probably do something about that. No surrender! How can this be? I have riches, power. I am as great as a man can be. Well done, everyone. That just leaves Lord Arendelle. Yes, he is the one we need to worry about. 
Keep moving and remain alive. You I have been captured already. You didn't even have the grace to buy me some time. Well, I've little interest in facing burden. So it's time for me to deploy my wild card. Dark magic. Find the casters and strike them down so we might dispel this sorcery. Come, Baldemar. You and I can split up and sweep the palace. A fine idea, Leopold. Let us make clear to these fell warlocks that they are most unwelcome in this place. I'm afraid to consider how we'd stand without those two on our side. There. The barrier should dissipate now. That still didn't stop them. It seems they came prepared for any eventuality. Quickly now! We need to reach Lord Arendelle before he slips through our fingers. Let's go st Wretched vermin. I admire you. However, you clearly have no concept of how terrifying I can be. No distractions. Banish the darkness, and the terror will fade as well. No. Sorry, what? Are you starting to understand the situation you're in? I know when I am bested. the darkness itself, and the darkness cannot be slain. <sighs> he escaped. <sighs> Cowardly of him, but we can take comfort in our victory either way. <laughs> I guess. Uh. Now what? Huh? Are you kidding me? When mercs want to celebrate a win, we slap our open palms together, like that. A commendable victory, Lady Edelgard. Thank you, Hubert. Still, I don't much like how those rats manage to keep skittering away. I imagine that guy's pretty close with Kranya and Tomas, since he shapeshifted and all. Yes. They're all part of a clandestine organization attempting to conquer Fodlin from the shadows. Those who slither in the dark. Huh. Never heard of them. Hmm. So, what is the plan now, Your Highness? We make ready for my coronation. Hubert, gather everyone in the throne room. At once, Your Highness. This is wonderful! Your Highness is going to become Your Majesty! Yes, but first I must speak with the Minister of Domestic Affairs, as well as the other Counts. 
Also, I need you to go to the Knights of Seraphs. I wasn't expecting all of you this soon. What are you doing here? We demand an explanation. You arrested my father, Edelgard. How could you do such a thing without discussing it with me first? I'm probably not getting the finer points here. But you basically defeated both my father and Ferdinand's, is that right? I wasn't fighting your father, Kaspar. He was aiding me, as was Count Hevering. So, um, what about my father? Did you arrest him? Unfortunately not. Hmm, okay. Look, I'm sure you have your reasons for all of this. But maybe you should sit down and talk us through it. And I intend to. We'll reconvene later and clear everything up then. Monica, join me. We'll talk as we go. Hmm. And you say I have two years to complete these preparations. In cooperation with Count Hevering, of course. You and Hubert can finalize the details later. As I won't be choosing a Prime Minister for some time, I realize this may result in extra work for you. However, that also means more latitude to do things as you see fit, so long as you ensure we're prepared for a five-year war. I will not rest until I discover a solution, Your Highness. So long as our military leaders don't tread on my toes, I shouldn't have too much difficulty. Hmm. For something this big, you better believe we'll have plenty of need for resources. Leave it to a narrow-minded quill carrier like you to call that treading on your toes. In Her Majesty's name, I will decide what is and isn't appropriate regarding your needs. Also, anyone would seem narrow-minded when compared to a swollen-headed juggernaut such as yourself. A juggernaut, huh? Yeah, I like the sound of that. I see someone allowed his sarcasm lessons to lapse. Moving on. Lord Arendelle's followers will doubtless attempt to interfere, so we'll need to keep a close eye on them. Once Count Varley joins us, we can discuss the matter I mentioned further. It seems he's just arrived, Your Majesty. Apologies for my tardiness. Gregoire von Varley at the court service. My, but attendance seems light. Where is the Lord Regent and the rest of our noble six? Duke Eyre stands accused of treason and has been dismissed as Prime Minister. He currently awaits judgment in one of our finer dungeons. Lord Arendelle is a fugitive from the same crime and will be taken in soon. Dead or alive. It makes no difference. Well, this is a rather shocking turn of events. I had no idea Ludwig was capable of such things. Still, rest assured that I am nothing like him. Indeed. And as for the others, Duke Gert was dispatched to Western Fodland to conduct negotiations. And my father? The late Marquis Vestra perished in the struggle to capture Dugaya. Which makes me the new Marquis Vestra, a minister of the Imperial household. Ah! You've nothing to fear, Count Farley. Her Majesty intends to bestow a great honor upon you. Majesty? Wait, you mean... The title hasn't been formalized just yet, but as it stands, you should view it as a foregone conclusion. More importantly, Count Varley, there is a very important position I wish for you to fill. I intend to rebuild the Southern Church, and who better to be the bishop than you, our Minister of Religious Affairs? I will make my case to the Archbishop personally. Thankfully, Lord Arundel and his men are no longer around to obstruct such a move. You would bestow such a position on me? 
Make no mistake, it is a great honor, but are you certain? Very. Now then, your first duty in the role will be to oversee my coronation. Do not fail me, Bishop. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Are you enjoying your stay at the palace? More than I expected, though I do feel a bit out of place here. Understandable. Everyone here either is a noble themselves or serves one. However, that will change. As Emperor, I plan to end discrimination based on social status. Everyone will have a chance to rise to the top, whether they are born into the aristocracy or not. No more nobles or commoners, huh? That does sound pretty great. I'll be impressed if you can actually pull it off. Oh, I will. But at the moment, I have a proposition for you. Go on. We've successfully expunged the Prime Minister and the rest of that puppet government. But a certain amount of unrest is unavoidable. Which means I must remain here in the capital. In other words, I can't go back to Garrick Mach and continue my studies. What about the others? Our noble families will be in disarray as we transition to my system and new heads of household take power. Of course, some, like Dorothea, are not as affected as the other students. But all of them have offered to stay and help rather than return to the monastery without us. If you'd be willing to do the same, I'd like to offer you a top post in my new military. Now there's a tantalizing offer. It's not like you have any real obligation to the church. Plus, it sounds like quite the thrill. I'm more of a hired sword than an officer. Which is why you're perfect. Hubert wants to recruit mercenaries such as yourself and form a new unit. I can't put some noble in command of them. That would be ill-advised. But they would listen to a capable fighter such as you. You're Hubert's first and only choice. I don't know if I really have the experience for it. But if you have that much faith in me, I won't let you down. Having deposed Lord Arundel and Duke Iyer, Edelgard quickly arranges for her coronation, her eyes now fixed firmly on the monumental task laid out before her. All the while, the kingdom of Fargus is thrown into unrest over the right of succession, while the Leicester Alliance finds themselves pitted against an invading Almyron horde. Realizing the troubles of Fodlin will fall squarely on her young student's shoulders, Archbishop Rhea closes the Officer's Academy and permits her charges to return home. Scarlet Blaze. The struggle commences. It is the end of 1181. Two years have passed since the Officers' Academy closed its doors. Having ascended the throne of Adrestia, Edelgard has begun to enact sweeping change. The Holy Kingdom of Fargus now calls Dimitri its king, while Claude reigns over the Leicester Alliance. All three house leaders have found their wings as rulers of a new generation. With the whole of Fodlin still reeling from these rapid changes, Edelgard decides the time has come to usher in a new era. People of Fodlin, the Empire will stand by no longer Together, we rise against a church that has become steeped in deception and corruption. 
The church has used their doctrine to deny you power and reshape Fodlin as they see fit. They thrust upon you the illusion of nobility in order to oppress who they choose. And they helped create the kingdom and alliance as a pretext for war. Finally, they teased you with the promise of salvation from pain they themselves inflicted, and did so in the name of their own prophet. Well, I say no more. The Empire has severed herself from their hypocrisy by restoring the Southern Church and nurturing her people's well-being. And today, we purge the world of their evil forever. We will retake Garigmach from the Central Church and stamp out any nobles who abet its depravity. By my title as Emperor Edelgard von Gressfeld of Adrestia, I hereby declare war against the false Church of Seros. The past two years have flown by in but the blink of an eye. And while they felt short, they were certainly eventful. The Empire has come far since we removed Arendelle from power. We reformed the government, remedied our diplomatic troubles, and bolstered our military. And most significantly, we gave strength to the Southern Church, creating the perfect wedge against the Church of Seros. A shame our bishop has become the target of relentless censure as a result, why the Central Church even targeted him for assassination. Poor Count Varley. It could not have happened to a finer man. And then there's the matter of Lord Arundel. What are he and his minions up to now? Slithering in the shadows of Fodlan, much as they have done for centuries. It will not be easy to drag such adept skulkers into the light. Perhaps not. Then for now, let's remain focused on the formidable adversary ahead. Did you call us here, Edelgard? It's good to see so many familiar faces. I did, and thank you for coming. This may be the first time I've seen all of you in the same room since the Officers' Academy closed. Likely, yes. We have all been rather busy marching down the separate paths life laid out for us. Or most of us have, anyway. Others, such as myself, managed to eschew work in favor of a more leisurely existence. Hey! I was working hard at staying in my room, but still! Father's been dreadfully busy, so he's never home. Which has been pretty nice, actually. I was returning home to Bridget. I finished my task, and now I have been returned here. Well enough. Now, as you know, the Empire will launch its attack on Garig Mok in the coming days. Emperor Edelgard will lead the invasion personally, and wishes for those present to form the backbone of her army. And as it has been some time since Adrestia had an army under the direct command of the Emperor, I fear we currently lack for officers. I trust each of you, and can think of no candidates better suited for the job. Will you do this for me? So you've got other plans for my father's army, I take it? Well then count me in. I'm ready to go whenever. I would have been happy with a life serving you here in the capital. But if war is coming, I want to see it through myself. I'll go wherever you go, Your Majesty! I'm always ready. Plus, it's good to know I haven't been training this hard for nothing. I've high hopes for you, and trust you will prove the wisdom of my decision. Just you wait. I'm gonna hurdle clean over those high hopes and show you what I can really do. Be certain to save some of your hopes for me. 
because I most assuredly have what it takes to succeed. And with that, new Empire Army, move out! Ferdinand, kindly leave the commanding and naming to me. me. How tiresome. Do you have a moment? What do you think? If you would. The Imperial Army has invaded Burgundy, and will reach Garrig Mach within the month. With no way to stop their advance, we must ready ourselves for a siege. We sent the bulk of the knights away last month, after the Western Church occupied one of our sacred sites. The forces that remain are thin at best. How are we to hold the monastery with such short-handed numbers? It is possible the Empire orchestrated that entire incident to bleed off our strength. Look at how thoroughly information about it was buried, and how quickly the Empire invaded after declaring war. It all feels carefully calculated. I would not put it past them. If they bring war to our doorstep, they will want us on the worst footing possible. If the tides turn against us, we may have to abandon Garrett Mach. Never! Edelgard is already using the Southern Church to erode our legitimacy. And now she has the gall to try and remove us by force? There can be no mercy for tyrants. So help me, I would like to put her entire army to the sword myself. Is it truly too late to prevent bloodshed, Lady Rhea? Edelgard must have her reasons for doing this. If so, they elude me. The woman seems to consider our church's very existence an abomination. Yet she has gone to the trouble of reviving the Southern Church. Which implies she does not mean to destroy the faith outright. Perhaps Garrig Mach is the true prize she seeks. Or worse, this entire invasion could merely be a precursor to conquering all of Fodler. Hmm. Her purpose matters not. Our charge is to defend the monastery at all costs. I took an oath. I swore I would never again suffer the boots of thieves to solid this land. Rhea. It is a low form of comedy we find ourselves engaged in this day. To think the descendants of their empire will be the first to invade Garrick Mach. 
All the more reason to prevent it. I care not if we shared blood countless generations ago. I will not permit anyone to defile Mother's resting place. Feels like an eternity since I've seen the walls of Garrick Mock. Who knew we'd leave as students and return at the head of the Imperial Army? Lady Rhea must be so angry at us. Oh, why did I agree to come along? We'll be lucky if angry is as far as her feelings go on the subject. I imagine she's apoplectic. I don't know that word, but it has way too many syllables not to be scary! The Knights of Saros will likely fight tooth and nail to stop us. Well, we've got teeth and we've got nails, so I don't care who we're facing. I'll brush them all aside. Worry not. While they may have a monastery to hole up in, we possess the superior numbers. Garigmach is well fortified, but not impregnable. We're gonna smash the place to rubble. While I appreciate the enthusiasm, we need to keep it in one piece. The Empire has use for the monastery once we're done here. Understood? Uh, right. Sorry. The soldiers are ready, Your Majesty. We can begin the attack at once. The scouting is also finished. We know with certainty where the enemy will be taking its positioning. We are owing this to Monica and her perfect memory. She has incredible knowledge of this place. As usual, Monica, your talents are invaluable. I really didn't do much, Your Majesty. That is, um, it was truly an honor to assist you. Not to say I've finished helping you, of course. In fact, I am always at the ready. Don't ever change, Monica. And finally, who do we have here? This is my little sister, Flesh. I was given approval to make her my attendant. Flesh von Burgley's at your service, Your Majesty. My brother and I are, um, in your hands. Ah, so you're Kaspar's famous aunt, who's actually younger than he is. Yes, Your Majesty. The very same. Flesh is too green for battle, but she'll be providing support from behind the front lines. You can rely on me. I realize saying this might make the situation worse, but there's no need to be so nervous. If you act to the best of your abilities, all will be well. Now then, everyone, the time has come. The time to take Garrig Mach and reclaim Fodlan! Jumping straight into the maw of our enemies, eh? Ooh, how exciting! Is this where I should talk about my heart racing? Huh? Since when do we talk about your feelings? That's new. Do not throw away your lives, friends! Be not reckless as you attend to our defense. A defensive position within the monastery walls? This is merely a stolen tactic. We must dispatch them at once. Then the brute force approach it is. Garrick Mach must fall. <laughs> we'll start on the lower level and work our way up. Taking control. Why'd they drag me into this? Not there. Control of the walls. Split into groups and take those strongholds. The enemy is desperate. Then we'll most likely dispatch troops to recapture any strongholds we seize. Be on your guards for this tactic. If you don't want to fight, then surrender. I swear no harm will come to you. That's very nice of you, but they gave me a home here. So I should probably put up at least some kind of fight. Okay, 
I'm losing. That's really bad. I sense a darkness in your power. If you harbor ill will towards them, then help us best them. I know which them you're talking about. Well, it's not like I want revenge or anything, but sure. Sign me up. To think I would be serving the church and fighting my own homeland? Is this the goddess testing me? Why are you, of all people, cooperating with the church? All I can say is I was unlucky enough to be nearby when the church had need of fighters. I beg your forgiveness, your majesty. My grief and meaningless existence. Is this what you want? To die here in shame? This doesn't have to be your end, Constance. Join us. Fight with the Empire. As you wish, Your Majesty. I do not deserve to throw my feeble existence away in such a manner. The right flank Take has broken breather. the enemy line. The left is through as well, Your Majesty. Excellent job, both of you. But there is still much work to be done. I will not sit idly by and allow Garrick Moth to be placed in further danger. <laughs> <laughs> The enemy is unleashing powerful magic. We can't hold out for long. The enemy is after the strongholds we captured. They'll be retaken if we don't defend them quickly. We reach the street. I care not for your reasoning. There can be no excuse for war. Strongholds with greater ease. We've broken through the walls? No! Send <laughs> reinforcements at once! Defend the monastery, whatever it takes. We'll soon control the walls. We are losing ground. Dig in, all of you. We must hold out, no matter what. No, I have to do better. Now, does that mean he's given up? All right, we have the ground surrounded. Now we just need to fight our way up to the monastery proper. We can retreat no further. You Empire soldiers will rue the day you took up arms against Garrick Mock. I will not ask you your reasons. Not anymore. But I will see your evil punished! I struggled so. Forgive me, Rhea. I can fight no longer. The rest is up to you. Worry not, Sedith. Nor you, Flame. 
You both did well to hold them back this long. Now come forth, all of you. Protect Garrig Mach from those despicable rebels. So Lady Rhea has decided to show herself at last. Stop us, everyone. Victory can only be ours if we strike her down. I'll fight for Lady Rhea until the end. Ready the heavy weaponry. We can no longer afford the luxury of worrying about collateral damage to the town. I'm sorry, Lady Rhea. I can't fight anymore. Your efforts will not be in vain, Cyril. I will send these sinners to meet the goddess. in this. It's not a mystery. I'm a merc, and she's got the coin to pay me. I yield you the monastery for now, Edelgard. But know this. There will be no forgiveness for your blasphemous actions this day. No, I don't expect there will be. Take heart, everyone. Garrig Mach has fallen, and victory is ours! Lady Rhea! Are you hurt? Oh, Catherine. You came. Not soon enough. Garrig Mach is done for. It is all right. For now, we must retreat. This path is unknown to the Empire. It will take us out to ALL, the Valley of Torment. From there, we make for Fargus to seek aid. The Empire attacked from the east, which means at least some of the Alliance's lords must have aligned with them. But those of the Kingdom are devout. We can trust them. I have already sent a messenger ahead requesting reinforcements, and should the need arise, Asylum. In that case, I'll talk to my parents and ask for their assistance as well. Regardless, we should hurry. We can't let the Empire get ahead of us and send troops onto Kingdom soil. Now, follow me, if you would. Thank you, Catherine. Let Edelgard have Garrick Mock for now. Let her enjoy this fleeting moment of glee. Because when we return here, Edelgard von Hressvelg will suffer a death beyond her greatest imagining. <sighs> Garrick Mach, you remain ever as resplendent as the day I left you. The place cannot be so dear to your heart that it requires inferior poetry for an introduction. Inferior? I will have you know that line comes from one of my favorite operas. However, I concede I may have gotten carried away, what with my head still swimming from battle. Hey, I know exactly what you mean. Something about Garrick Mach is just special. And our victory here is gonna have a huge impact on the war, right? Yes, this should be enough to lure some of the more indecisive nobles into our camp. I only wish I could vanquish the guilt I feel for turning on the church like this. Still, it was my decision to fight by Aedy's side, and I stand by it to the end. I see. In that case, proceed as planned. Deploy the pursuit units immediately. At once, your majesty. 
So, Rhea and the others escaped with the help of a great white beast, did they? Almost as if the Immaculate One that saved St. Saros has returned from the mists of legend. Although, it's a bit unnerving the way it sprung out of nowhere. I knew we shouldn't have messed with Lady Rhea. She can be so scary. I'm just going to go back to my room and stay there until forever, okay? Okay. Do as you like, Bernadetta. But realize your father will be arriving in Garrick Mock soon. This is the seat of the Church of Saros, and as bishop, his place is here. R really? In that case, I think I'll just forget about the monastery and go with you. Good. Just be aware we may be marching for the kingdom next. The kingdom? <sighs> I possess no love for the cold, but I will try to grin as I am bearing it. Point at the path to your foes, and I will be hunting them to their final breath. Don't get ahead of yourself, Petra. Whether we capture or kill will depend on the foe. Now then, enough wasting time. We need to find Rhea, and we need her alive. Two years ago, I never would have imagined we'd be fighting a war like this. You say fighting, but I think you mean instigating. Let's be fully clear about our role in all of this. Still, this is a positive turn of events for you, yes? How do you mean? When a war breaks out, every mercenary in the land starts crawling out of the woodwork. And those associates you happen to be working with should be tough enough to take on you-know-who. Geralt's mercenaries. Yeah, good point. And then you can give them their just desserts or die trying. Could have done without that last part. Thanks. <laughs> relax, relax. You know I'm on your side. Our destinies are forever intertwined. Listen up, boy. You're not going to believe this. Judith, do you think you could ease up on the whole boy thing? I'm your fearless leader now, remember? But sure, tell me what happened. You might want to take a seat for this. Garrig Mach Monastery has fallen. Not even the Great Knights of Saros could stop the invaders' overwhelming numbers. Wait, what? That's not possible. They should still be days away from the monastery. How did they manage to deliver an army of that size to the gates of Garrick Mach so quickly? Unless... This can't be happening. Did Count Gloucester turn? And Acheron too? I'm afraid both houses fly Imperial colors now. House Phlegathon yielded the north side of the Great Bridge of Murden, and Gloucester waved them right on through. Those filthy liars! When I warned them the Empire was raising an army, they couldn't stop puffing their chests and crowing about how they'd hold the border. But it looks like the Empire had already gotten to them. This is all my fault for not keeping my ear to the ground. I'm afraid that wouldn't have helped, Fearless Leader. All the dirty dealings were handled via letter. But now I've lost the initiative, and against Edelgard no less. She can come at the Alliance with gloves off now. This is a real problem. What is it? Sir, we have an unexpected guest. It's, uh, Lord Holst of House Goneril. Holst? What's the strongest man in Leicester doing at my door? Besides thinking about battering it down, I mean. You can ask him yourself, sir. He is present. Apologies for dropping by without warning, my lord. I just happened to be near Deirdre when word reached me about Garrick Mach. I didn't realize you were in our neck of the woods, Holst, but 
Please, come make yourself at home. As fate would have it, I was just pulling my hair out over the exact same problem. Can you believe that Count Gloucester? He turned on us like it was nothing. If I don't handle this situation with the Empire delicately, it will fracture the Alliance. If you have any sage advice, now would be a great time for it. Or muscle. I'll take muscle if that's what I can get. I came here to help however I can. We must work together to keep Lester safe, and more importantly, free. Garrig Mach has fallen to the Empire, Your Majesty. I did not expect it would last long. Is Lady Rhea safe? Yes. She escaped, and is on her way here with a small force. I see. This won't be like granting asylum to your standard refugee. If we take the Archbishop in, it will be tantamount to declaring war on the very Empire. Is that a risk you're willing to accept, Your Majesty? It is. We have already thoroughly discussed the matter with the Kingdom's Lords. Even if I refrain from deciding publicly one way or the other, the Empire will still insist that we hand Lady Rhea over. The Kingdom's people and government are too frail to stand without the Holy Church's support. I agree with her ultimate goal. But such a situation calls for gradual reform over time. The Emperor's desire to tear it up rapidly will not do. Then it is a good thing we've prepared for such contingencies. I will start by sending a party to ALL to welcome our new guests. Thank you. I would go myself if I could. But I'm needed here to prepare for the war. For now, send messengers to Counts Galatea and Karen imploring them to muster troops for our defense. Oh, and send for House Fraudarius as well. Let's make sure our new Duke earns his title. Grave news, Your Majesty. Hmm? What is it now? Count Roe has declared fealty to the Empire and is marshalling his troops as we speak. Also, one of his bannermen, Lord Lenato, is moving to hunt down and slay the Archbishop. We have long held our suspicions about House Roe, but I never expected their actions to plunge us into war. And after all the discussions we've had to prevent exactly this, he must believe his reason is just. Very well, then. Our plans have changed. I will go and meet with Lady Rhea personally, and House Fraudarius will serve as my guard. Inform Galatea and Karen. They are to gather their troops in Erebus and Geraint lands. Lord Lonato was once a faithful servant to the Crown. Will you now see him executed? I have no mercy for traitors, no matter their pasts. On the contrary, I have an obligation to protect the Kingdom from his kind. We've struggled long to attain this peace. I will not permit the Empire to crush it beneath their foot now. Scarlet Blaze. Skirmish in the Fog. The Empire captures Garrig Mach, and when the Lords of Fargus and Leicester declare their allegiances to the Central Church, they incur Edelgard's ire. She sends one army to the Alliance under the command of her war minister, Count Burglies, and leads a second herself to the kingdom's castle Gaspar, the bastion of Northern Roe. Lady Edelgard. We have received an urgent message from Count Roe. Apparently, he has taken up arms against the Kingdom. What is he thinking? He was supposed to join his troops with ours, so we could use our combined strength to strong-arm more of their neighbors into declaring fealty for us. What use is a plan if the man won't follow it? 
It also seems that Lord Lenato, one of Rose castled bannermen, has gone so far as to mount a one-man crusade against the Archbishop. He has long held deep enmity for Lady Rhea, and likely leapt into action at news of Garrick Mock's fall. I should have suspected he would lack self-control when it came to his vengeance. Naturally, the Kingdom mobilized troops in response, and now move to strike Lenato down as we speak. So, where does this put us? Can we get reinforcements to him in time? You want to save the man, Your Majesty? If I may, we would march all that way for... what, exactly? Imagine the consequences of leaving him to die. We need our vassals to believe the Empire will always come to their aid. Always. Of course. Your Majesty, I will make the arrangement straight away. The region northeast of Castle Gaspar is shrouded in deep fog this time of year. That likely accounts for why they are currently only engaging in minor skirmishes. Which means we still have time to intervene. Good. Now make our plans known to the others. I'm counting on you, Hubert. At once, Your Majesty. All of this makes me even more concerned about the situation in Leicester. Nothing has impeded Minister Burgley's march east, has it? It has not. In fact, Count Gloucester has given him leave to garrison our troops there. I hear he has begun turning the screws on House Ordelia, and any other lords who have yet to make their allegiances clear. On the other hand, the Alliance's more powerful houses have united in their condemnation of Count Gloucester's actions. The Minister may soon face a battle with Houses Regan and Goneril, if not others. I can't picture a battle the Minister wouldn't win most handily. Still, the Alliance's new leader, Claude, is an unknown quantity. We can't risk underestimating his skill. Quite right. One can never be too cautious. So, what did you want to talk about, Hubert? I thought we might discuss you, actually. You wish to know more about those eldritch powers of yours, yes? Ah, oh, right. Edelgard said I might have a chance to get to the bottom of that. Kinda figured she'd forgotten since it's been two years now. Pray accept my apology on her behalf. It has been more trying to find answers than we originally expected. With Lord Arundel lost to the winds, it has been a trial combing through what little evidence he left behind. And, of course, we are undertaking all of this in the midst of painstaking preparations for war. Well, Lord Arundel is the guy who could shapeshift like Tomas, right? The one who escaped? Correct. However, we have recently learned that he goes by another name. Tallis. Did you figure out if my powers are the same as his? And what are my powers, anyway? Not some kind of curse, I hope. A fine question. I think it is safe to assume that you possess some form of magic. However, it is not the same ilk as the white and black magic we are familiar with. Yours is, shall we say, dark magic. Heathen craft that is structured differently from conventional spells. <laughs> you are familiar with those who slither in the dark, yes? People like Tomas, Kranya, and Tallis. We believe they possess the same power as you. Well, it's tough to accept, but the similarities are too great for it to be anything else. Still. What you think does not matter in the end, because my mind is already made up. So, what? 
Are you gonna banish me someplace far away because I'm too dangerous? It's fine if you do. I'm used to being cut loose. That's just how life as a sellsword goes. Do not be absurd. If we were done with you, we would kill you, not banish you. Fortunately, you are exceedingly talented, and Her Majesty trusts you implicitly. The way I see it, we stand to profit best by keeping you in our service. So, you trust me too? Um, thanks, I guess. But now we have a more important question to answer. Namely, how you came by your powers. I thought I heard someone talking in here. We were just finishing up. Do you have business with our mercenary friend, Your Majesty? I do. And I suspect it's related to what you were just talking about. Then I will leave you to it. Pray excuse me. <sighs> you should see the look on your face. Did Hubert threaten you? Don't let it get to you. Yes, he's quite good at that kind of thing, but it comes from a place of caution. I wish that was all that was bothering me. I want to transform the world into a place where no one has to feel trapped by where they came from. When I am done, it won't matter where you are born, whose blood you have, or what powers course through you. Everyone will be treated as equals. That's what we're fighting for, and that is what this war is going to achieve. So believe me when I say this, I don't care who you are. I only care about what you have done, and what you have yet to do. Well, thanks Edelgard. I feel a little better now. The fog is rather thicker than I imagined, Hubert. And if I'm not mistaken... Yes, I agree. Dark magic is assuredly the cause. We already know those who slither in the dark have had comings and goings at House Row. I doubt one of them is here, but there could be a mage present to receive their training. Then we had best leverage our own assets. Why is everyone whispering? Is the enemy aware of our coming? It's entirely possible, yes. They could be directly on top of us, and we would scarcely know it. So yes, let us all stay on our toes. Prudent of you to bring it up, Ferdinand. Ah, thank you. I, I mean, thank you. <sighs> Why so quiet, Caspar? Normally you'd be at the front of the line making all kinds of racket. What, you think I'm the kind of guy who'd get all scared and give our position away? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not afraid of anything. Hmm. You're unusually quiet, Petra. Did you not get enough sleep or something? I am listening to our surroundings. Nothing has more danger than fog. One incorrect step and you will be losing your life. <laughs> Can we all try to relax? I'm pretty sure we're alone out here, so let's just calm down before we wear ourselves out. Sometimes, you all make me think we're still back at the Academy. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Well, great. I was hoping to finish this before reinforcements arrive, but so be it. I will prioritize locating Lord Lenato. Can I leave the Imperial troops to you? I know what to do, so let me do it already. Just mind this fog and make sure you don't attack the wrong side. That goes for you as well. Let us see if you can live up to your reputation. The closer we get, the denser the fog. I can barely make out my own feet. Which will prove useful for Lord Lenato. As he possesses low numbers, 
The man will doubtless take any edge he had. We need to find him before the kingdom does and take him into our protection. Lord Lenato will surely be hiding in one of these strongholds awaiting rescue. Yeah. Safe down the spellcaster. This fog lifts, and Lord Lenato will have nowhere to hide. Excellent. All the citizens are safe. The Imperial Army is here. All troops, ready yourselves to intercept. You will pay in blood for invading the lands of Fargus. It will take more than this. How am I being invested by the likes of you? My thanks for the rescue. Put one task off the to-do list. Now we just have to deal with the kingdom. So I live to see another day, did I? I knew the goddess wouldn't abandon us. I don't like how close we cut this, but I'm glad you're safe. Now we can focus on the rest of the fight. Now that Lord Lodato is rescued, we can finally dispense with the magic. Hey! <laughs> the fog is gone! Now we don't have to keep running into things. How could you betray His Majesty, Lenato? How could you do this to me? Ash, you came here for me. I was starting to worry we would never be able to put our archers to use. Ash is your adopted son, and family should not fight family. Let us persuade him to lay down his arms instead. Lord Lenato carrying that weight around for the rest of his life? Uh, no. You're right. I surrender. Forgive me, Ash. I beg you. I could not bear to lose another son. Our goal here is achieved. Now we hunt down any kingdom stragglers and... What? Your fun ends here. detachment. Put them to rout and make sure to keep Lord Lonato safe. That's my true power! You again, is it? I see you fight for the Empire now. You're done! Just draw your weapon. You and me have a score, so... Guess I better get in there, instead of letting the kid do all the work. Count me in, Captain. I may be a new arrival, but no one can arrival my enthusiasm. Ignore the Ashen, and target the enemy commander instead. Doing so will force them to retreat. I know we were told not to engage, but isn't this a great opportunity to see how much you've grown? Come then, let us fight with honor! Wait, is that Alois? Since when did he quit the Knights of Saros? Time to face the Bladebreaker's wrath! An Ashen Demon is no joke. If you don't feel like you can win, it's best to stay far away. Such monstrous strength! 
We're really pushing our luck here, Halloween. You decide when we fall back. Watch this! I won't be the one to drag my new comrades down! I got this! Stay the course! <laughs> Gerald's mercenaries, retreat! Well done. We have kept his lordship safe. This victory will greatly further our conquest. Huh? We did it. Yet you're still the saddest looking fighter in camp. Why the long face? Because we only barely got the job done. Everything else was a miserable failure. Sure, we saved Lenato and put Geralt and his mercenaries to rout. But we let the kingdom's troops get away in the process. And if that wasn't bad enough, I failed to beat the Ashen Demon. Basically, we lost in nearly every way you can lose. Wrong! You were hired to do a job, and you did it. And in the process, you've received a valuable reminder about the unique danger the Ashen Demon poses. You're right. I can't believe one fighter could turn the tide of an entire battle like that. Precisely. They're surely going to continue standing in our way, so do try to dig a little deeper the next time you square off. Then I guess my goal hasn't changed. Thanks for the encouragement. We must make haste. There's not a moment to lose. Understood. Randolph, take your troops to Orion Road and await further instruction from Hubert. Leave it to me, Your Majesty. Why is everyone so worked up? What happened? It seems the troops we stationed in the Alliance are in danger, and serious danger at that. Gloucester and the other lords betrayed them, and now they have been completely cut off. No! The word betrayal suggests they were on our side in the first place. But I think we can safely assume that was never their intent. This whole time, they were simply waiting for us to move the rest of our army toward the kingdom. As soon as they saw an opportunity, they cut off routes to the Great Bridge of Murden and Garrig Mach. Now that our troops are trapped on Alliance lands, House Regan and House Gloucester have them surrounded on both sides. It's doubtless one of Claude's clever little stratagems, and it stings. I don't understand. Everyone is aware of the troubled history between Regan and Gloucester. Why would they decide to bury the hatchet now? Unless... This supposed feud is little more than a web Claude has spun for this exact moment. Perhaps it is, but perhaps not. For all we know, he wants us to overthink the situation and make a greater mistake. We'd better stay on our toes. This all fell together too perfectly to be some kind of unhappy accident. I suppose. All I know is that our reinforcements will never make it there in time. The direct route east risks running into both Kingdom and Alliance forces. But if we attempt to skirt around them, we will all be aged in grey before we ever reach Gloucester. Which means our only option is marching south. We'll regroup on this side of the Aramid River, retake the Great Bridge of Murden to cover our backs, and then cut through the enemy cordon. That doesn't sound a whole lot faster. Will our troops be able to hold out that long? I would say no, but these are no ordinary soldiers. They are commanded by our greatest warrior, Count Leopold von Berglitz, the Minister of Military Affairs. 
and a man who has never lost even one battle. If anyone can rally our troops and convince them to hold, it's him. What a brilliant trap. The Regan boy's even craftier than they say. I agree, sir. Even Count Gloucester's adept army seems to be acting with remarkable discipline. But will the reinforcements reach us in time? Hmm. The real question is, are they coming at all? Because if they're on the way, they'll make it in time. So long as I draw breath, they will make it. So count on them coming. Her Majesty would never abandon us. Yes, sir. Soldiers of the Empire, I know fear gnaws at your hearts, and that's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't run from this fear. Embrace it. Take measure of the enemy that surrounds us, and look them square in the face. Yes, we're outmaneuvered and face a vicious fight ahead. But pray to the goddess for protection, and her fire will fill your soul and temper your resolve. Our only duty here is to stay alive, be fearful of death, and let not a single soldier fall needlessly. Raise your voices with me now. Let me hear your courage. We will not lose. Wow, these guys aren't backing down. If anything, they actually seem more excited than before. How is that possible? They're completely surrounded. No one will ever reach them in time. Yes, but Count Burglis is their commander. And I'm guessing a lot of those troops are veterans of the Dagda and Bridget War. During that conflict, the Count's troops held off wave after wave of Dagda soldiers right to the very end. Our force must look tame in comparison. Okay, so what now? I wanted this to be clean, but we're looking at a complete bloodbath on both sides. What I want is the upper hand against the Empire, not these people's lives. And there's honor in that, but I don't think they're going to play along. They don't have to accept every part of it. I just thought they might be, you know, scared. Well, so be it. They may have boundless courage, but they don't have boundless food. If Count Burglis wants me to tighten the snare, that's exactly what I'll do. Scarlet Blaze. Bridge of Betrayal. The Empire achieves early success in the war thanks to House Gloucester, a noble alliance house whose vows of allegiance and safe passage were key to the quick capture of Garrig Mach. But Count Gloucester breaks his oath and turns on Burglis' troops, trapped in hostile territory with their supply routes severed. The Imperial Army's outlook appears bleak. I fear I may have miscalculated, my son. How can that be possible, Father? We have the enemy surrounded. Yes, and they have yet to give a damn. Time grows short, and soon Edelgard's reinforcements will descend upon the Alliance. Then we will hold them off at the Great Bridge. And they will find another way. If they manage to take even one of the Aramid River's crossings, they can break through our ranks. And while that may not spell immediate defeat, it will dash any hopes of Count Burglis' surrender. Eventually, Edelgard's army will wash over the land, and then, my son, we will be defeated. Speak plain, Father. I beg of you. What does this mean for House Gloucester? Do not fret, Lawrence. This was a leap of faith we had to take to better our territory's fortunes. 
When Claude came to me with this offer, I determined the reward to be worth the risk. If the gamut fails, so be it. All it means is that our house will have to swear allegiance to the Empire. Edelgard will never settle for such. She will demand... Oh, Father. No! I am proud of you, my son. You have grown into a man strong and wise enough to lead our house. Is there nothing that can be done? What of your dream to claim the Alliance leadership from House Regan? It is your house now. You determine our path. Besides, when the dust finally settles from this war, there may not be an Alliance to lead. So I am to submit to the Empire and carve out as big a place for our family as I can? Is that it? You would have me put an end to the Leicester Alliance? Perhaps my praise of your wisdom was ill-advised. You get ahead of yourself, Lawrence. We bend the knee only if we lose, not before. And as you said, we may yet be able to drive back the Emperor's reinforcements and win the day. Always think two steps ahead, my son. Be clever. Survive. That is the lesson I seek to impart. Oh. I had best go prepare for my final battle as Count Gloucester. However this plays out, look for a way for our house to prosper and seize it, Lawrence. Seize it! That is how Irvin Fritz Gloucester fights, and it is how you must fight as well. Well, we managed to slog our way to the encampment. Now we just have to finalize our plan. Why is it so important to hold part of the Aramid Riverbank again? I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to cross over into Alliance territory before it's too late? If we do, we risk the enemy cutting off our retreat. We are here to break their siege, not fall prey to one. If we don't conduct this rescue carefully, we'll be worse off than we started. We must be smart. And that means establishing at least one bridgehead in addition to the Great Bridge of Murden. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. The Minister is a general of much endurance. He will be holding out until we arrive. He is more than a warrior and a maker of strategies. It would lack wisdom to be making an enemy of him. Yep, that's my father. No one can beat him. I just hope I can be half the warrior he is one day. I think even one and a half Bergleses would be more than enough. Not that it's any of my business. So, what are we to do about House Gloucester? They have indicated a willingness to swear fealty, for whatever that pittance of a promise is worth. That leaves only Phlegathon and Ordelia. And I doubt very much that anyone would take us to task for dismantling them. The head of House Ordelia is one of the five great lords. Dismantling them, as you say, would hamper Her Majesty's ability to rule effectively in the future. Consider, for example, why we chose not to dismantle House Iyer. Because I belong to House Iyer, and you did not have to. Ah, of course. You are happy so long as they install successors who are willing to toe the line. That is the plan, yes. House Phlegathon, however, must be disposed of. Their lord, Acheron, has leveraged his control of the Great Bridge to do whatever he well pleases. I have a suspicion the Alliance desires him gone as badly as we do. Lawrence Gloucester and Lysithia von Ordelia were Her Majesty's schoolmates, yes? They may be more willing to listen to reason than the others. Sure, but Claude went to the Officer's Academy, too. And he's taken a firm stance against the Empire. Do you really think this can be handled via diplomacy? That will depend on precisely what their demands are. But first, we must retake the Great Bridge and extricate Count Burgles and his troops. 
Let us focus our energies on that for the time being. Agreed. And it would behoove us all not to overlook how devious Claude can be just because we went to the Academy together. If he's not willing to come to the table, I won't hesitate to meet him on the battlefield instead. I won't hold back either. Sometimes you have to kill old friends in this line of work. That's just how it is. What did your investigation uncover, Hubert? It appears those who slither in the dark had nothing to do with any of this. This plot was hatched by Houses Regan and Gloucester alone. In other words, we know exactly where the idea to encircle our troops came from. Claude Von Regan, leader of the Alliance. He is going to be a true thorn in our side now that he is in charge. Back when Duke Regan had no clear heir, the Lords were busy maneuvering to be next in line. And Claude appeared in an instant and laid claim to the seat of power. We were hoping that would be enough to throw the Alliance into disarray, but he has done a remarkable job of seizing the reins. Feigning discord with Gloucester while they privately schemed together was an especially nice touch. Sadly, it seems we're facing a gifted tactician as well as a skilled leader. Yet for a tactician, he woefully underestimated Count Burgley's. I say we finish his education. It is time Claude learns the gulf between his power and the Empire's cannot be bridged with a few clever tricks. We'll reach the Great Bridge of Murden soon. Houses Phlegathon and Gloucester are defending it, just as we anticipated. But Ladislava has done her job and broken through the enemy line for us. I intend to claim a swift victory and return her to us whole. If possible, the members of House Gloucester are to be taken alive. As we discussed previously, killing them will jeopardize Her Majesty's ability to rule effectively. If any enemy commanders appear open to persuasion, try to convince them to surrender. Our goal here is not to utterly annihilate our foes. The fewer casualties, the better. That said, anyone who refuses to submit must be struck down without mercy. I know when to catch and when to kill. I am often being faced with such decisions on the hunt. You, you expect me to make that kind of decision in the heat of battle? You just do what you always do, Bernadetta. If it's all right with you, I prefer to focus on the diplomacy part. I'm not much for bloodshed. Then you may leave that part to me. I will happily deal with any soldiers you cannot. It should be a simple enough matter to determine which of our enemies wishes to live and which will choose the way of death. We'd better not misjudge anyone, or else our lives will be the ones in danger. Then we should fight first and ask questions later. When in doubt, take them out, am I right? We can sweat the small stuff when the battle's over. Until then, I'll do what I do best. I believe we should all do what we do best. If we do, I feel confident we will emerge on top when the dust settles. Victory is the most important thing, so leave the vanguard to me. Then. If everyone is prepared, let us show them the might of the Empire. They certainly aren't fooling around with these defenses. Count Gloucester must be located on the far bank. Ladislava is holding the central checkpoint. We'll mount our attack from there. The checkpoint is our key to taking the Great Bridge. Without it, we have not even a slim hope of victory. 
Her Majesty is counting on me, and I will not let her down. Not so fast. If you want through, you've got to open those purses and pay the toll. Of all the irritating places to lay an ambush. This man is a mercenary. Perhaps offering a reward will allow us to avoid a fight. Fire! Rain arrows down on their central forces! Should have sent soldiers west to deal with it. Still, that was a brilliant salvo. Our enemy clearly possesses a gifted officer among their ranks. Gifted? Wait, are you talking about me? I chose to be here, and I'm going to fight the Empire to the end! Arrows are raining down on Ladislava. We have to stop them at the source. If I stand down now, I'll never be able to face the others again. How do you know, unless you keep living? I mean... Things like this tend to have a way of working themselves out, you know? I guess so, but... All right. I surrender. The arrows have stopped. Let us proceed. <laughs> Looks like you'll be my first real challenge in ages. Now let's dance! You know, I got no interest in dying. Not over here. The Empire will lose its foothold if I fall here. And just surrender. Besides, you're a clever man. You know the Empire won't let someone as strong as you rot in a cell. Yeah, I can see the point. My thanks. Mind taking it from here? Rest, Ladislava. This is a great achievement. You honor me, Your Majesty. May victory be yours this day. Now we can fight on even footing. Those are my lands at the other end of this bridge, and you lot are not welcome. There is a fool, even by Alliance standards. Let us do them a favor and introduce him to an early grave. Listen up, rogues. You will defend the supplies we stole from the Empire to the death. I can already smell the coin they'll fetch me. I am Acheron, savior of the Alliance. Oh, and that's a good one. Let me just write that down here. <laughs> Can't you idiots see I'm in trouble? Now stop standing about with your jaws slackened and help me already! Stealing is a thing of great evil. You will be returning what you took. I should have switched sides, but I had the chance. So, they've taken the Great Bridge, have they? That makes us the Alliance's last defense. There must be a way to resolve this matter without further bloodshed, Father. Our first priority is to find Count Gloucester. He was on our side once. He'll surrender. There is no telling where the enemy might be lurking. Those are Gloucester lands you see beyond me. 
and I will not suffer one heel of your boots to sully them. We have no choice but to seize control of the entire bridge. will soon be in our custody. Further resistance can serve no purpose. So be it. I am no use to my people if I die here. Lawrence, no! You monsters, how dare you hurt my son! I will not shame my people by surrendering to you without a fight. Count Gloucester will not concede so easily now that we have damaged his precious heir. Here it comes! Out of the way! You're done! Take that! Is this the end? Fight no more, Your Majesty. All of House Gloucester bows to your will. Victory is ours. But this is merely the first step of our rescue. Right you are. We need to relieve our allies who are embattled on Alliance lands. One, but this is no time to rest easy. There's a lot more work still to be done. Agreed. We will leave some troops here with the wounded to hold our position. Then take the reconsolidated force north without delay. Sadly, there can be no victory celebration until we have extricated Count Burgleys and the others. Based on our projections, they will run out of provisions at any moment. We can also assume they know we have made it to Gloucester, meaning they will be waiting for us. But each hour they wait is another hour their stomachs remain empty. If we peel away House Gloucester's troops, we can create an opening in the enemy ranks. Once that's done, we'll bring an end to Claude's shady scheme. Interesting. It seems the Empire may not want our heads on pikes after all. That is good news. I was concerned they might be so upset as to seek your execution. But based on their posturing, it seems those fears were groundless. Well, I am an effective lord, if I do say so myself. They must realize taking my life would make it difficult to keep order on my lands. Few lords anywhere in Fodlan are as loved and respected by their people as you, father. Perhaps. But if so, that only makes my misjudgment all the more grave. I never should have let that man cajole me into starting such a needless fight. You say that now because we lost. But would your appraisal not be different in the face of victory? The people would have idolized you for ushering House Gloucester toward even greater prosperity. Questions of what if matter little after you lose a battle, and even less after you have misled your people. The time to judge the right and wrong of things is before, not after. It is for this reason that I have decided to yield command of our house to you. I only pray you might walk us back from the terrible misstep I have made. Besides which, the Empire still views me as a traitor. If I fail to step down now, I will spend the rest of my days wondering when the axe might fall. 
I... I understand, Father. With all that has happened, it is hard not to see the wisdom in your decision. I will find a way to build a newer, stronger House Gloucester alongside the Empire. And just as it did before, our house will shine brighter than any in Leicester. Your Majesty, Gloucester has yielded his lands and titles to his firstborn son, Lawrence. This new Count Gloucester has expressed a desire to join the Empire. No doubt he wishes to make his loyalty plain by taking a clear stand against House Regan. Well, I see no reason to reject his offer. See that his soldiers are properly integrated. As you wish, Your Majesty. Sometimes I have no idea what goes through your noble heads. How can you possibly trust a house that just plunged a knife into your back? If a merc pulled a stunt like that, they'd either be cast aside or cut down where they stood. I believe it, and I'd like to do the same. But not just anyone can hold Gloucester territory together, and I have no one else to take Lawrence's place. I suppose no one would put up with the aristocracy if it didn't afford some sort of stability. Yes, that is simply the way of things in Fodland now. But as I've told you, I intend to change this. The age of deciding our rulers by blood must end. A day will come when anyone can vie for the right to rule, and then we will be free of this wretched system. So stand with me. Help me make it so. Scarlet Blaze. The Triumph of Valor. To rescue Count Burglies, Edelgard seizes the Great Bridge of Murden, forcing Count Gloucester's surrender. With no time to lose, she then presses on, unbowed. But Claude is not one to be caught off guard. He rallies every resource at his disposal, determined to tighten the noose around Burglies' forces and prevent any rescue. So we've lost Gloucester. Unavoidable, perhaps, but it still stings all the same. Fortunately, I haven't been sitting on my hands this whole time. If we smash the Imperial reinforcements and stop them from breaking the siege, Count Burglies will have no choice but to give up. We're going to face that challenge, and we're going to face it with the Alliance's latest and greatest, which is why I've asked all of you here. Did you really just say, latest and greatest, with a straight face? Oh, he said it all right. And while I can't swear we'll have that, we do at least have numbers on our side. Yep! More than half of the old Golden Deer House is here! Some of us may not be quite as great as you say, but... Well, you know best. I'm grateful to each of you for answering the call. It's more than I can say for some of our classmates. Yeah. Ignatz and Lawrence both sided with the enemy. No. About that. It pains me to say this, but how Cerdelia has made its allegiance to the Empire clear. It was against my parents' protest that I came here in the first place. If this battle doesn't unfold the way you're hoping, I may be forced to leave as quickly as I arrive. That's okay, Lysithia. You're not the only one who's here with strings attached. Yes. My adoptive father has also insisted I return home at once, should the tides turn against us. Sounds about right. Three cheers for that good old Alliance solidarity. I'll fight with you to the end, Claude! Uh, unless it puts Maya in danger. Then I'm out. 
Look, what matters is that you're all here, and that we settle this war with the next battle. Also, for full disclosure, I may have sort of brought along some extra professional muscle. Come on in. It's good to meet you. I'm the acting captain of Gerald's Mercenaries. Our guest here is fresh off another battle with the Empire on Kingdom soil. From what I gather, remaining in the Kingdom was no longer an option. And that's when our paths crossed here in Alliance territory. Oh, hello! I know Reliable when I see it, and you are definitely that. I'll do whatever you ask, as long as I'm getting paid. So long as we're allied, I won't fail you. All right, let's begin our council. As you've no doubt heard from our scouts, the path from here to Deirdre will be fraught with difficulties. The Alliance has constructed fortalices and palisades and laid other traps to slow our progress. In addition, they are plotting ambushes at key positions along the way. Needless to say, we will not be able to avail ourselves of the direct route. But if we try to dance around all their traps, we'll never make it in time. Yes, but this is Count Burgley's we're talking about. He could probably stretch his soldiers a few extra days through sheer force of will. I would normally write off such an idea as lunacy, but sadly, it will likely come to that. We have made attempts to smuggle provisions to Count Berkeley's through holes in the enemy lines, but this has met with little success. They must be so hungry! I know just how that feels. The struggle to get food when all you want to do is hide under your covers! Hello, old friend! I mean, no offense, but if time is truly so short, why do we waste it dithering in council? We should embark on our rescue mission straight away! Uh, yeah, what are we waiting for? We're their only hope! I agree. Less talking, more saving. Calm down, all of you. Such rash action is exactly what Claude is counting on. So we must take the safe route, but do so as quickly as possible. A best of both worlds situation, I suppose. Understood. Good. With that decided, let's move on and discuss our preferred formation. It's a dream. Why do you always settle for such simple reasoning? You know this is more than a fabrication of your sleep-addled mind. Our first reunion in who knows how long, and you try to write me off as a figment of your imagination? Hmm. Sorry about that, though I was definitely asleep last I checked. Anyway, what do you want? To warn you, something is troubling me, eating away at me, actually. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I can sense a presence closing in on you. A dangerous one. The Ashen Demon, right? This wouldn't be your first warning about that one. Hmm, that might be it. Perhaps the two of you will square off in battle soon. Good. Because this time, I'm gonna win. I have to. Fortunately, I'm pretty used to these powers of yours by now. Then I'll let myself stay just a tiny bit optimistic. Just don't forget that your opponent has had as much time to grow as you. Your future isn't the only one at stake here. The demon could also put an end to Edelgard's vision with as little as one swing of a sword. 
Whatever happens, we can't let all our hard work be undone. Since when have you been such a warrior? I've got this, trust me. I won't let anything happen, not to Edelgard or to the others. What do you mean? I'm always worried about you. After all, you're my... Yeah, yeah, I'm your partner in destiny. <laughs> I finally got you to say it! <sighs> How wonderful! I knew Count Burgley's was formidable, but I clearly did not give the man enough credit. I thought for certain he would have fallen by now, and yet here we are. If we're handing out credit, Claude deserves some as well. Maintaining a siege for this long takes its own toll on morale. Yet his troops remain disciplined, well-positioned, and ready to engage us. One advantage to a siege is mobility. They can deploy soldiers up and down the line as needed to keep the upper hand. In other words, they are outfitted with many highly mobile units, which means they can respond quickly to enemy reinforcements as well. If we rush in blindly and are driven back, it would likely break our allies' spirits for good. Not even Count Burgley's would be able to rally them again. Surrender would be the only option. <sighs> Why are they wavering now when we're so close? We're not looking to win the war today. We just have to break the siege. We should attack their lines at multiple positions. We don't need to win the battle. We just need them to break formation long enough for the Count and his troops to get out of there. Well, this is new. You are not often one to give voice to your opinions on tactics. Still, you have struck the proverbial nail on the head. That is exactly how we must proceed. Then it's decided. I look forward to your exploits on the battlefield. Today, we free our Imperial allies and reward their continued valor in the face of impossible odds. Count Burgley's controls the stronghold in the center of the plane, but the enemy has him completely cut off from aim. Our goal is to break the siege so he and his troops can evacuate <laughs> safely. So much for securing a surrender before reinforcements arrive. I'm itching to show what my muscles can do. Now, who wants to be first? Well, you all know what to do. Engage the enemy! Me. There's no time for the delicate approach! Let's tear into him from all sides! There can be no victory this day if we do not rescue both Burglies and his troops. Wait! That's Raphael! Don't kill him, please! Let me talk to him first! over to our side. You don't have to do this, Raphael. Think about Maya. She needs you, remember? Hey, no fair. But, uh, all right, nuts. I'm in, but only because it's you. Come 
comes to rescue us. I know your spirits are weary, but rekindle them now with whatever spark of hope remains in your soul. What does it matter if I die? My blood compels me! Talks with Margrave Edmund will go much better if you surrender here. Will you not consider it? You're right. My adoptive father would want me to lay down my arms, not my life. Those strongholds will drive a wedge into their siege. All right, here they come. But I came here to fight, and I won't back down. There are two strongholds. We must deploy our forces with cleverness to be taking both. So Delia has already offered us their allegiance. Which means Lysithia is here of her own accord. Look, I really need to hold this line. So why don't you just leave and we'll call it a day. But it still hurts to fight my old friends. You serve House Blaster. What did you expect? I heard about what was done to you, Lysithia. And as one who understands that intimately, I ask you to join my cause. You too? Yes. All right. I'll hear you out. Clear out the enemy soldiers in their stronghold. Well met, my son. For the first time in my life, I thought my end had come for me. Yeah, I've never seen you in such bad shape. You look half dead. It surprises me to see you among the ranks of my rescuers. Do not be having the wrong idea. I am helping the Empire, not you. The siege is coming apart at the seams. Deploy the reinforcements. Fill those gaps. They're trying to shore up areas where we've thinned their ranks. Don't let that happen. I can't mess this up. Not when everyone's counting on me. Good. They're wide open. Push through. We must reach Count Burgley. Get out of there, Hilda. We can't lose you. Yeah, right. Sorry! The siege is broken, men. Your courage and perseverance have been rewarded. The way is open. Move as one and defend the Count and his soldiers as we go. You think I'm just gonna let you slink out of here? Ha! <laughs> I'm already two steps ahead. Looks like we're up. They cut off our escape and... Oh no, look who's with them. We won't put a dent in Gerald's company with the numbers he has. I vote we rush Claude's main position instead. It would indeed catch him by surprise. But do we flank from the left or right? Either way, let's choose a path and clear out anyone foolish enough to stand before us. Hold on. Are they coming for us? We're nearly clear of the battlefield. Just one more push and... Oh, no! It won't do to have you slip our grasp now. The Ashen Demon. Clever of Claude to keep this little surprise for the moment it would matter most. I'll handle the mercenary. The rest of you press on. Don't stop, no matter what. You'll never get a better crack at the Alliance's leadership, Your Majesty. Hit them with all you have! Leave nothing on the battlefield! 
Count Berglis is keeping the Ashen Demon busy, which means Stop now is our chance to strike at Claude. Hmm. You're attacking the main... The battle's lost if they've made it this far, but maybe I can still take out an officer or two. In position? But that's not... I have to go help them! You're done! That all you got? Who's messing up all of my clever plans? Hey, I just work here. You're gonna make a nice trophy for the Emperor. And that's all I can take. Let's see if our new mercenary friend is worth all that gold. I must be getting old. Enough! I'm falling back. You handle things over there. We'll hunt down the Imperials who escaped. They have reinforcements watching the escape route. They will hold Geralt's mercenaries at bay. Which just leaves the Ashen Demon. We're close to the finish now. So let's take whatever time we need and do this right. has left the demon weary. This would be our best chance to crush that pest for good. This didn't go how I expected, but I can still do some damage. How many times have we fought now? Either way, this will be the last. You're right about that. I'm not letting you leave here alive, Ashen Demon. <laughs> Such vexing arrogance for one so small. Perhaps you truly are one of their descendants. In any event, you labor to destroy my vessel, did you not? That is a deed most foul. One you will pay for with your life! You cannot hope to win so bound in flesh. Pitiful. This isn't a fight you can win. Get out of there! You can run all you like. <gasps> Why do you... fight me? <sighs> Why so this? I'm sorry, Claude. They were too much for us. It's all right, Hilda. Well, it's not, but I knew this was a possible outcome. I was hoping the terrain might let us hold, but against that many soldiers deployed that skillfully, it just wasn't enough. You sound sad. It's a little weird. Can you blame me? Look at how many people have died because I decided to fight this war. <sighs> Maybe I should have just let the Empire have their way. My father and the others never would have accepted that. You had to throw everything you had at the enemy at least once, or they'd think you were a coward forever. Wow, Hilda. I didn't think you'd picked up on all of that. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. Too bad everything I had still wasn't enough. Well, the next step is to put our heads together and figure out what to do next. I hope you don't mind if I lean on you and that brother of yours for support. Lester's round table is overdue for some big changes. Again, your majesty. 
You've got my deepest thanks for rescuing us. And since my lack of foresight's to blame, let me apologize again for what happened. I will not hear of it, Count Burglies. Had any but you been in command, I would be collecting corpses right now instead of thanks. I failed to see what Duke Regan and Count Gloucester were plotting. The blame is mine alone. So I will hear no more self-reproach from you. Go now and rest those weary bones. I'm grateful for the kindness, Your Majesty. Honestly, this experience shook me more than you might realize. I never would have made it through without the brave men and women who served me. They're the ones who deserve your praise. Understood. I will see they are duly rewarded. Hubert, summon Monica and have that put in writing as an official decree. And now, I want to know how we are faring with our efforts in the kingdom. And here I thought we won. As did I. Who knew the Ashen Demon had that kind of strength? Not that I'm making excuses. You gave me power of my own, and it still wasn't close to enough. That's not true. Of course it is. What am I even up against here? It's like I looked away for one second, and suddenly I was facing someone else entirely. Hmm, that would explain what was troubling me before. That is the unique danger I sensed. Still, you can win this fight. I know you can. And I'll do whatever I can to make it so. We'll claim victory over that monster together. You know what? You're right. I'll be strong enough one day if I just keep at it. Still, one day could be years from now at this rate. We should probably think of a backup plan. And hey, the Ashen Demon's a mercenary, right? Might be best for the Empire to toss some coin their way and put the rivalry behind us. You want to hire that thing? Seriously? Fighting side by side with the Ashen Demon? Are you mad? You make it sound like the worst idea in the world. We have a war to win here, remember? Gotta keep an open mind. Ah, I understand now. You've witnessed your adversary's true strength and convinced yourself you cannot win. What? No. I just know a valuable resource when I see one. And we're far better off with them than we are against them. If that's really how you feel, then so be it. But trust me, you don't need to worry. You'll get stronger soon, I promise. So maybe don't go relinquishing your prey just yet. After all, I desire nothing more than to see you achieve your goals. A glove does not defy the hand, and yet you've done just that. So this is my name, yet I am also called The Beginning. I am progenitor and mother to all who call Fodlin home. Where am I? I am not here to answer all you ask. Yet, I will grant the one. You stand before my throne. If you so wish, then take a seat. But know then that your flesh is mine to wield. You lack the power to resist. My flesh? What are you saying? You should not have interfered! Wretch down with a stroke. Oh, that one vexes me so. When next we meet, I must step in and deal with them myself. It is 
quite clear that you cannot my power safely wield. Do I speak plain? Not in the slightest. I have so many questions. Hey, lazy bones. <laughs> Get up already. You sure you're all right? You don't seem like yourself. I'm fine. Just a strange dream. Like the ones you used to have. Yes, but this time we talked. Huh? You fool! That was no dream! Ugh. What's wrong? Nothing. Wait, didn't you... Do you lack wits? My voice is not for him. Whenever I speak, it is for you alone. On second thought, I think there is something wrong. I mean, my hair's still a different color, right? Yes, and your eyes too. How that happened is beyond me. Anyway, we lost the battle, so probably best to wave this place goodbye and find somewhere to rest up. Is that a fact? Actually, I think I'd feel more comfortable staying here on the battlefield a while longer. I just need to swing my sword around, get my head on straight. Don't worry, I'll be fine. If you say so, but if it gets any worse, tell me. Hubert, if you would. Of course, Your Majesty. Let me apprise you all as to what is going on. As you know, our Talons have been sunk in our little alliance problem for some time now. But now we must deal with the Kingdom, which has sent an army to claim the heads of Count Roe and any others who came over to our side. However, Roe is seated at Aryan Road, the fortress city, a citadel as hard to crack as Fort Mercius. Ah, Aryan Road. The Silver Maiden. Seems sort of weird to call a big hulking place like that a maiden. That's because she's as hard to get near as the purest of maidens. If you're still confused, that's your own problem. Yeah, I still don't get it. Our reports indicate that despite the strength of the Kingdom's army, they are still struggling to take the fortress city. But, given enough time, they will. Unless we send reinforcements. Therefore, we must direct our attention to the Kingdom once more. Will this constant bouncing between the Kingdom and Alliance not take its toll on our soldiers? Who said we were taking our entire force? We will depart for Garigmoth with elite troops, then collect fresh units before proceeding west. Simultaneously, I plan to have Duke Garrett summon the Western Lord soldiers and march toward the fortress city. We will join up at that point and strike at the Kingdom's main force together. What say you to that? I would say it is the ideal strategy, at least on paper. Okay, let's keep our optimism in check here. I mean, speaking from personal experience, nothing ever turns out the way you want it to. Should we be having concern? If the plan is good, we will find success. And the Alliance? They may attempt another one of their schemes while we're distracted. They will not. Her Majesty is taking a measured approach to resolving matters with Lester. Count Burgley's is worn as thin as they are. We will have him set up camp at the Great Bridge and continue negotiations from there. To our advantage, Gloucester's new Count Lawrence has decided to join the Empire. Additionally, the daughters of Houses Ordelia and Edmund have been given leave to fight by our side. Besides, from what I hear, the round table is too busy chewing itself apart to start any more trouble. That leaves only the Knights of Saros to contend with. The Minister of Religious Affairs will handle them. 
My father? But he's not capable of facing the knights. I let the Ashen Demon outmaneuver me in the last battle. That won't happen again. Scarlet Blaze. The Maiden's Peril. When he learns of the Empire's struggle, Dimitri decides the time is right to strike. He moves swiftly to drive the Empire out, toppling one unfaithful Western Lord after another. Finally, he descends on Aryan Road, seat of Count Roe, the first Lord to betray him. Thus does Edelgard's army begin another grueling march to rescue a different Count. We've been here before. But we were in such a rush to rescue Lenato that we never got more than a glimpse of Aryan Road. Can't really appreciate the scale that quick. And now we're back to bail it out. If only Claude hadn't hatched his feudal scheme. We could have avoided all these needless battles and saved countless lives. Yet, in a more positive light, he handed us the perfect opportunity to show that not even the Alliance and Kingdom together can match the Empire's strength. Once we crush the army of Fargus, our superiority will be clear for all to see. And will that actually result in fewer casualties going forward? Because that is what would put Her Majesty's heart at ease. I will make no guarantees for matters beyond our control. So long as fanatics are willing to die for the Central Church, casualties are inevitable. Ah. Uh. We broke the Alliance's siege, and we can break the Kingdom's too! We're lucky it's a stronghold like Aryan Road that's under siege. It shouldn't be half the nail-biter we had to deal with last time. Yes, but last time Count Burglies was in command. For all we know, Count Roe will break like a twig and surrender the moment he hears the first soldier crest the hill. As I see it, we have two options. We can take a direct path for Aryan Road, or we can wait until we scatter the kingdom troops that are fanned out in the north. It is a most vexing decision. As a professional at staying holed up, I think we should secure the perimeter first and get rid of as much danger as we possibly can. Time is important. We should be striking fast and hard. We're gonna have to deal with the North after we free Aryan Road anyway, so it makes sense to clear them out now and get it over with. Let's keep both options open and see how the situation unfolds. General Randolph. Yes, Your Majesty. I commend you for holding Aryan Road with what few soldiers you had. Thank you, Your Majesty. But I am unworthy of such praise when I failed to prevent the siege. Coordination with Count Roe proved difficult. It was all I could do merely to keep the enemy in check. That alone is commendable. A more foolish man would have rushed to glory, and gotten himself and his underlings killed in the process. I have a key role for you in the coming rescue, General. I know you were up to the task. Of course, Your Majesty. My brother and I will give our all! Very good. But do not let your eagerness for victory come at the cost of lives. We have many more battles ahead, and must conduct ourselves accordingly. Hey there, Edelgard. Leafing through documents, are we? This is new. Yeah, completely out of character, I know. But one of these reports has been stuck in my mind. Back when Count Roe declared fealty to the Empire, other lords committed to doing the same, right? But the moment we left and the Kingdom Army marched south, 
they fell right back in line. It's like they never betrayed Fargus in the first place. Good memory. That's exactly what happened. Houses Elidor and Duval both made overtures to join the Empire. So why is the Kingdom welcoming them back without so much as a wrist slap? Is this another House Gloucester thing where the politics demand it? Seems like their importance as noble families outstrips the fact they're all two-faced liars. Politics are doubtless involved, but the heads of houses can change, as they did with Gloucester. We're not bound to place importance on any one individual, only the bloodline. So the Kingdom's aristocracy gets the same free pass as the Alliance's? Yes, and the Empire's as well, even though I do my best to treat everyone equally. I cannot afford to slight a minister's house, for example. They broke fealty to the former Prime Minister when they swore it to me. Would you call that treachery? What makes it different from the actions of Count Gloucester? I don't know. You tell me. It depends on what motivated the change of heart. Was it for land? For status? To exact revenge or seize glory? Because I view a betrayal for any of those reasons to be utterly worthless. Yeah, money and vengeance are pretty shallow motives. Well, oh, that's why I'm here. I'm not talking about mercenaries. I'm talking about lords. Each of their decisions has the ability to upend the lives of thousands, if not more. Only a person with the character to realize that is truly fit to lead. I've worked for plenty of nobles in my time. Until now, I couldn't have cared less what it means to actually be one. But then you gave me responsibility over all of these soldiers, and it... Well, I guess I'm starting to see the world in a different way. And the people who live in it, too. I see. I admit, your grand designs sail clear over my head sometimes. Most of the time, actually. But that's why I stand by you. I feel like one of these days, something important's gonna rub off on me. And I feel the same. You've opened my eyes to all manner of things I might never have seen otherwise. You are a commoner without the fetters of a family name, wielding your sword directly for me. That's more valuable than you may realize. You believe this, Gwendol? We've waited what feels like decades, and still no Imperial army. What is the Emperor thinking? She promised to protect us. Calm yourself, my lord. They will come. We've received reports of a large army forming to the south of Aryan Road. They will scatter this siege to the wind. I have no doubt of that. They had better. It's her promises that swayed me into betraying the kingdom in the first place. I didn't do this just so my lands could be leveled by the King of Fargus' fiery wrath. The Silver Maiden will keep us safe. She yields to no invader. Viscount Elidor and Count Duval have both sent messages, imploring me to surrender for the sake of my people. Yes, perhaps it's not too late. I can lure the Imperial Army in and kill them, then beg the King for mercy. My lord. Lenato, you fool. Your rashness is to blame for all of this. This is no time to go soft, my lord. Turning our coats a second time would be abominable. One betrayal can be explained away with the right sort of excuse, but a second? A second paints the lot of us as feckless curs. 
Ugh. Then what would you have me do? Gwendol, you tell me. Command it, my lord, and I will gladly go to my grave. You, however, must not. Yet unless you have fought life and limb for your people, you cannot surrender with honor intact. Anything less would earn you the people's scorn, just as it did your ancestors. Ha! Ha ha ha! Yes, of course. It certainly would not do to forget that Roe blood is stained with treachery. Well, so be it. A weather vane must go with the wind, and a born traitor must finish the sedition he started. Wise words, my lord. Your people will thank you for this course of action. This isn't good. It seems the fortress gates have been partially breached. The kingdom's soldiers are pouring into Aryan Road. Does that make us right on time or a bit too late? Dimitri is no ordinary king if he managed to pry a citadel like this apart. I assume our soldiers stand ready? We go on your command. If we dally too long, some of our officers and troops are likely to surrender to the enemy. That includes Count Roe, who has a most notorious sense of self-preservation. Yeah, him and every other noble. Come now, that is simply not true. Why, take me, for example. I am the perfect embodiment of what every noble should aspire to be. You can tell us all about it later, Ferdinand. Everyone, move out. Courage, everyone. Aryan Road is nearly ours. Keep pressing until we claim the main hall. The King's army is true to its reputation. Even I can only stall for so much time. They're closing in on the main hall. We must help them and quickly. We must reach the main hall before Count Roe is put in hell. I take no joy in battling old friends, but I have a duty and will see it through. Don't make me kill you, Mercedes. your best shot. It is not too late to swear fealty. I've no desire to take unnecessary lives. Gwendolyn, I have decided to fight for the king after all. Help his majesty drive those imperial dogs back from whence they came. Why, my lords? How could you change sides again after all my caution? Come to this, eh? So be it. Take our remaining soldiers and cut the Imperial dogs down where they stand. I am your knight to my dying breath, my lord. I see you've dug your grave. Now you can lie in it. 
Forgive me, Your Majesty. That takes care of their gate. We're nearly to the main hall now. We must pass over those traps if we are to reach the main hall as swiftly as possible. Can they be disarmed? <laughs> had a place at our table. Such a shame. If the Count has been struck down, I'll simply crush the enemy by my own hand. I'll take your spot. <laughs> Let us make this a clean fight. You must have kept busy to make such strides in two short years. I could say the same for you. Now let's get this over with. of the West. If we don't retake it... No. We must retake it! Is that it? We are at a breaking point! All forces, fall back! Move, Your Majesty. I will guard your escape. That will not be necessary to do. Stay with our king and move My on. Turn. Swear that you will return to us, Ingrid. I could not bear to lose you. Bring victory to Carpus, Your Majesty. We finally have the advantage. Let's work on securing the rest of the fortress. Is the king safe? Good. Then I've done what I set out to do. She laid down her life to protect Dimitri, and proved loyal to the very end. Yet sadly, despite our best efforts, Count Roe and too many others perished. This is most painful indeed. <sighs> we must hurry, Your Majesty. The others have already withdrawn. I know. I know. Forgive me, Ingrid. It saddens me beyond measure to leave you here. The blame is mine, Your Majesty. I should have taken guard of the rear. Then I would only be mourning your death instead. The decision was mine, as is the failure. Every death this day rests on my shoulders. Your Majesty, please. She deserved so much happiness. Even after losing her betrothed, she faced life with strength and vigor, only to face the agony of death once more. It should have been me who died. How can I ever atone to Count Galatea? To Glenn? Please, don't torment yourself. Ingrid chose to be there, and she did so for you. Do not take that from her. In the name of this magic lance, I swear I will defend Fargus. So rest now. 
I will return for you when you are avenged. By your valiant efforts, Orion Road has held strong. I thank you, one and all. Ah, I hardly broke a sweat. Those Kingdom soldiers were nothing. Wait, if they were nothing, then why was I having so much trouble? I thought I was surely off to my death when Count Roe turned on us. A fine job of pulling through. Truly. That dumb luck of yours is awe-inspiring. I can't believe we had to kill Ingrid. She was a most formidable commander, Dorothea. We had no choice if we hoped to claim victory. I know that. You think I don't know that? Right now, we need to discuss our next move. I'm sending the main body of our army back to Enbar. They'll remain in the capital until they recuperate from this latest string of battles, and until we've had time to retool our strategy. We hold Aryan Road and the Western Church in the west, the Great Bridge of Murden to the east, and Garig Mach between them. We'll treat all three as key positions and endeavor to hold our lines there. After we regroup, we'll determine a proper time to resume our advance. It vexes me to say this, but I have been short-sighted. We are nowhere near achieving our goals in the Alliance or the Kingdom. My command has been riddled with errors, and for that, I apologize. Oh? And where exactly is all of this coming from? You usually exude confidence. From where I stand, we have come a great distance with minimal casualties. If time has been lost, we should be easily able to make up for it. I'm personally happy I had the chance to see Her Majesty's vulnerable side, even if just this once. Ah, reassuring her with predictable responses, are we? Well, sorry. For once, I'm not sleepy at all. Nice try. That response still registers way up there on the Lin scale. I will be using the extra time to make improvements, so I can offer more usefulness in future battles. <laughs> I'm lucky to be surrounded by such consistent friends. How about me? Do I count as consistent? I can always count on you to be you. And you may take that any way you like. So, we're finally going back to the capital. Feels like it's been ages. Couldn't come at a better time, either. My bones could use the rest after all the battles we've been through. I wholeheartedly agree. The respite will help us prepare to face the Ashen Demon. Uh, yeah, about that. I've been giving it some thought, and I don't think we need to obsess over that anymore. But what about Captain Burling and your old allies? The ones who were brutally slaughtered, remember? You said avenging them was your dream. And think about how much hardship the Ashen Demon has put you through since you joined the Empire. Don't get me wrong, I'd still love to prove I'm the better fighter. But imagine if we got someone like that on our side. We'd be unstoppable. It's time for me to put my wants aside and put an end to this war. For my friends. Unless you think that's a mistake. The Ashen Demon's mercenaries have fought for both the Kingdom and the Alliance. They don't have a cause, and they don't care who comes out on top in the end. It's all about who can toss them the most coin. And now that the dust has settled a bit, we've got a chance to lure them over ourselves. And here I thought you were intelligent. Think about it. 
Their allegiances have changed, yes, but no matter their client, they've always been fighting the Empire. Why would they join us now? For that matter, what makes you think our soldiers would want to fight alongside a person who's murdered hundreds of their comrades? Well, yeah, all right. Fair point. I'm glad you understand. Hey, Arva. Yes? Why is it so important to you that the demon dies? Because I care about you, of course. I mean, I think that's the reason. Arvel, out with it. I suppose it just feels like our destiny. Like it's something we're meant to do. Scarlet Blaze. Unrest in Enbar. Despite successfully defending Aryan Road, Edelgard concludes it is no longer possible for her to hold the eastern and western lines at the same time, and pauses to explore solutions. Almost as if trading places, she sends Count Burglies to the Kingdom Front and returns her own forces to the Imperial capital of Enbar. Okay, I get that this little chat needs to be a secret, but if we get any deeper into the woods, someone's gonna be looking for our corpses. One can never be too safe. We do not know where our enemy lurks these days. Lysithia's here too? What's she got to do with this? Lysithia has had contact in the past with those who slither in the dark. I asked her to come along so she might be privy to all of the information. I'm just listening. Pretend I'm not even here. And besides, they're my enemy too. Right. Now, as you know, our enemy has gone into hiding. But considering what they are capable of, we cannot relax our guard, particularly at the capital. The streets of Enbar practically teemed with them at one time. So we cannot rule out the possibility they will attempt some mischief when Her Majesty and the rest of us return. That's true. They're devious. Both everywhere and nowhere at once. We have to be careful. They're a real headache, all right. So, how can I help? I called you here because I have a request, and a warning. I believe that if those who slither in the dark do try something, they will attempt to approach you. Me? Yes, you. Your powers may come from the same place as theirs, right? It stands to reason they might try to recruit you. Sure, but they'd be wasting their time. There's no way I'm gonna help those monsters. And what if they appear as your long-lost brother? Same hair, same eyes, a voice full of kindness. Or, what if one of them calls out, I finally found you, my child? Maybe they are your family, maybe they are not. Could you really drive a sword through their heart with that knowledge yet uncertain? <sighs> Forgive me. That was cruel. I am merely voicing one possibility among many. Still, now you will know to expect it. It behooves you to remember how harsh reality can actually be. Glad we have returned to Enbar. It's far warmer than the kingdom, for one. How are you doing, Your Majesty? I hope you've been getting some rest at least. 
It seems you never stop working unless someone physically pulls you away from it. I've been getting more rest than Hubert, at least. We're here in the gardens, chatting, are we not? Fair enough. And so I'm clear, even a sliver of your time is a blessing beyond all measure. Though, I suggest you find a better point of comparison than Hubert for how hard you work. This is the part where you nobles all crowd around a table slurping on tea, right? Seems like a good enough way to unwind a bit. Tea? I wouldn't mind were it just myself and Her Majesty, but... Hmm? What's happening in the throne room? Hubert, what's wrong? Intruders in the palace, Your Majesty. They entered through one of the secret passages, and are even now attempting to hunt you down. I sent soldiers to intercept them, but we should be prepared for anything. Do you think it's those who slither in the dark? I know not. But they could not have breached that passage without assistance from the inside. Though there are only a few who know of that passage, and would be capable of acting as a guide. Your Majesty. Might you kindly step this way? Hubert, do you really think she would do that? Trying to annihilate me as well? Thanks to you, the assassin made their escape! As though one of your paltry skill would have caught such elusive prey in the first uh. place. What matters now is that we give pursuit. All trespassers must be felled without mercy. That was Shamir, which means the attackers. They must be the Knights of Saros' assassins! We must protect Her Majesty with everything we have! Lady Edelgard, I must ask that you remain in the throne room where it will be easier to defend you and predict enemy movements. And as your protection will require my full attention, I will remain here at your side. Peace, good intruder. I assure you, I'm no fighter. Says the wolf in sheep's clothes. But sure, whatever. Where's the Emperor? You're not my target, which means you're wasting my time. Get me all you want. I can't waste another minute. Slippery creature. Let's stay on guard. Ah, Linhoff. It seems you're actually willing to work when the Emperor's life is on the line. Could you imagine the headaches if she died? Not that you don't already work every second of the day. I'm really keeping the heat on. All right, time for another approach. Enough of this. It seems clear the enemy won't come out of hiding until I do. <laughs> Hot one. Do it. <laughs> That's a trap. <laughs> that should do for me. Skies were meant to be secure. I'm doubly secure by the traitor of your best. It's 
brave of you to try and lure us out. But such courage will cost you your life! Thunder, Catherine. It seems Rhea is not playing around. No mercy to the Archbishop's enemies! My lord, we stand ready to walk the Emperor back to the throne room upon your command. As you wish. Use the magic. A wise man is ever ready. Nicely done. Thank you, Minister Heaven. We're taking a beating, Catherine. But don't worry. I've got your back. It is strange, Shamir. I heard you quit the Knights of Saros, yet here you are. Well, someone's done their research. But yeah, I'm just another mercenary now. Then let me make you an offer. Come work for us, and we will Don't spare me. Catherine's life. Don't listen to him, Shamir! Drag you out of here, Shamir. Go before I kill you myself. Damn it. Good. We have a contract. A threat has been quelled. But we allowed them far too much leeway. The situation calls for careful reflection. Still, you saved my life, which means my path for the future remains intact. Thank you. Hubert, did you hear? My father has... vanished. Yes. We should have killed the dastard when we had the chance. All I can say is that I wished my father to be tried fairly. As is his noble right. But now it is clear that will never happen. I could excoriate you further, but we lack the time. We must get to the bottom of this, and quickly. The Knights of Saros descended on us with the fury I have rarely seen. In all that confusion, even a bear could have slipped away without raising an alarm. I would not go so far as to call them conspirators, but... My father had many old friends in the palace. Some may have turned a blind eye. They should be found and questioned. I agree. That is one possibility. Though no, there is another. Yes, well. Now that we have a fugitive on our hands, I intend to make full use of it. This situation affords us a chance to remedy another. If that is the beginning of a scheme, Hubert, you do a terribly poor job of veiling it. It is no concern of yours. Not yet, at any rate. Right. Lovely. Well, so long as whatever you're planning has Edelgard's blessing and will be of aid to the Empire, I will brook no complaint. All will be revealed in time. <laughs> I'm told the secret passage they used was sealed off centuries ago. Yes. The palace floor plans failed to even show it. I'm shocked the church knew of its existence. In the age of Saros, the Empire and church were intimately related. It's safe to assume the central church took pains to retain its information from the time. I shudder to think what other inconvenient secrets they might be privy to. Yes. Well, based on the scale of the attack, they must have seen this as their first and only chance. Ah, oh, there you are. They said you wanted to talk? Uh, yes. I believe I owe you an apology. Oh, yeah? 
What for? To be blunt, I thought you were with the enemy. I had you pegged for an informant, planted among us by those who slither in the dark. It was not an unreasonable assumption. You enter Her Majesty's life at the perfect time, allure her with your strength, and choose our house to study with. And oh, surprise! You have dark powers. It was all too much to dismiss as mere coincidence. It was at Hubert's suggestion that I appointed you captain of our mercenary unit. He felt this would allow us to quietly assess your abilities and allegiances, and I agreed. I know I told you I did this because I believed in you and your strength, but the decision was somewhat more nuanced than that. I'm sorry. The moment I got wind of this attack, I immediately thought of you. This is it, I thought. The traitor has sprung the trap, and now the Emperor's life is in danger. But instead, you thwarted the assassination attempt and kept Her Majesty safe. I was wrong about you. Deeply so. And for that, I am ashamed beyond measure. Pray forgive me. Don't worry about it. I would have done the same. Honestly, I thought it was weird how quick you both trusted me. Good to finally know the reason behind it all. That does not excuse our actions. We had no right to deceive you as we did. But I swear, we will make amends. You have but to let us know how. You can start by trusting me. Or if that's not in the cards, have the decency to tell me you don't to my face. At least then I'll know where I stand. I doubt doing so would have changed anything. But I understand the sentiment. We will attempt to be better going forward. Be better? Really? Hubert, why not just promise to be more forthright? Because that might make me a liar. Let me speak plain. I no longer believe you to be working with the enemy. However, that does not necessarily mean the possibility is now non-existent. Oh, I guess I did ask for honesty. But look, do you guys trust me or not? Of course we trust you. Or I do, at least. So please. Let us begin this relationship anew on solid ground. Hmm. It is now 1182. The great war Edelgard instigated has swept across Fodlan and looks more grim with each passing day. The Empire struggles to hold Aryan Road to the west and the Great Bridge to the east. The kingdom cannot bring Western lands to heal. Even the Alliance must face changing times. The Central Church sends the Knights of Saros to the Imperial capital to assassinate the Emperor, but fails. Roughly half a year passes before the tides show any true sign of shifting. Scarlet Blaze, Shifting History. Five months have passed since the attack on the Emperor, and 1182 nears a close. Though each army schemes, the battle maps barely change. But now, history is about to resume its course. Today is a momentous day in Fodland's history that people will mark for generations to come. Then why do you look so conflicted? <sighs> I'm not conflicted, Claude. I'm just painfully aware of how much stronger I need to be. That's why I'm counting on you and the Alliance to make up the difference. 
Hey, I've got feeling unprepared down to a science, so let's say we help each other out. If we work together, we can achieve what's best for both of us, right? Indeed. I have reviewed the terms, Your Majesty. All that remains is the placement of your seals. Everything looks good to me. I'm especially glad we found a solution to the control of Murden. You've done fine work here, Hubert. Thanks. And thanks to you as well, Holst. You know I'm not good at this sort of thing. I've never known you to shy away from ceremonial affairs like this. But it is the most significant pact since the founding of the Leicester Alliance, so your caution was most prudent. I must admit, I was quite nervous. Thankfully, I managed not to follow it up. You surely jest. You did your work masterfully, without batting an eye. I am truly impressed that Lester's most valiant general is so well-versed in diplomacy. Don't be insulting, Hubert. Sir Holst is a duke. A man can be brave in battle and still know how to get things done. Take our Minister of Military Affairs, for example. A man for whom the term looks can be deceiving was likely invented. Speaking of Count Burglies, where is he? I thought he'd be here so we could go head to head. We never did get to finish our battle. I'm afraid the Count couldn't make it, but perhaps you'd consider my bodyguard instead? I'm certain you'll find the challenge to your liking. Is this your first time meeting, by the way? It is. Well, friend, care to go around with me? They say this Holst character is the strongest man in Leicester. But is he as strong as the Ashen Demon? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Now that's what I like to hear. I hope you mean later and not this very second. It would be a shame to get blood all over this nice paperwork. Yes. All eyes are on us. We must make this a grand gesture and show our soldiers that Adrestia and Lester have joined forces for a brighter future. Well, let's get to it. As leader of all the lords and knights who sit at the round table of the Lester Alliance, I, Claude Von Regan, hereby swear this pact. Lester pledges to work in harmony with the Adrestian Empire and do everything in its power to secure a peaceful future for Fodlan. By the covenant between the red blood and the white sword that crowns the double-headed eagle, I, Edelgard von Hressfeld, hereby swear this pact. Adrestia pledges to work hand in hand with the Leicester Alliance to deliver peace to the land and secure a future for all its people. The pact is sealed. And now it is our job to uphold it. Goodness, look how far you've risen. You're standing on the stage of history. I know you'll do great things. Yes, and greater things still. Right then, we've got plenty of bright new faces here at the round table today. First, a brand new Count ruling Gloucester. And Duke Goneril and Count Ordelia have decided that their heirs will sit for them. Unfortunately, Lawrence and Lysithia can't join us due to their responsibilities in the Imperial Army. I called you here to give you notice. The Leicester Alliance is assenting to the Empire's request and sending troops to the Kingdom Front. Houses Regan, Gloucester, and Daphne will be supplying most of the soldiers. And instead of the usual route through Aelel, we'll be invading Fraldarius directly by sea. You're staying behind, right, Holst? Indeed I am. Almira is still an unknown quantity. And we've no idea if or when Prince Shahid might stage another attack. And the same goes for House Ordelia. 
they've had more than their share of troubles on their border. We agreed that shipping their army away might not be the most prudent of ideas. And that's all she wrote. You'll find the details in the document you've all been given. I wish the kingdom would see there between a rock named Adrestia and a hard place named Lester and throw that white flag high, but of course they won't. So good luck, everyone. I'm counting on you. And so, the Alliance has agreed to bring their troops to bear and attack the kingdom from the east. At the same time, we will resume our invasion from the west using Aryan Road as a foothold. We'll subjugate the kingdom's lords one by one as we work our way toward Blathen. News of the pact will doubtless have spread throughout the kingdom by now. Provided enough houses see the futility in fighting, we may be able to avoid unnecessary bloodshed. However, that is likely wishful thinking. We should instead expect the worst and prepare accordingly. You think? Some of them already bent the knee to us once, along with Count Roe. Wouldn't they jump at a chance to swap sides again? An idea I am certain has already occurred to the King. Lately, we have been scrambling to reorganize, dealing with an attack by the Knights of Seros and negotiating a pact with Lester. And during that time, the winds of purgation have swept across Fargus. In one fell swoop, the King has expunged most of the nobles likely to align with us. Still, it's us and the Alliance against him, which means we've got the advantage. What's there to worry about? The concern isn't that we'll lose. It's that winning might come at the cost of too many lives. What an utterly pointless, senseless thing to do. Oh, I find it all so very draining. Whatever our intent, we're the instigators here. We can't expect the enemy to do anything less than defend their land with tooth and claw. Speak for yourself. If someone invaded my territory, I'd hand over lands and titles on a silver platter. Especially if I had no chance of winning. There is truly no other noble like you, Linhard. And perhaps no person at all for that matter. Regardless, we must proceed with caution. When people think someone is after what they possess, they respond with fear, even if the thought is all in their head. In the eyes of the people of Fargus, there is no limit to what evils the Empire might visit upon them. My father started saying he can't sleep because he's scared the old church is coming to Garrick Mock to kill him. From the sound of my mother's letters, he's really shaken up. Remember that the kingdom has much coldness. We must not forget to be bundling up like people of the snow. Our Petra is always ready for what lies ahead. I wish I had better understanding of your Fodlin ways, so I could be giving more assistance to everyone. Don't worry about it, Petra. With all the different factions in this thing, even we have a hard time keeping it straight. <sighs> this almost seems so backward compared to the way things were in Bridget. In any case, the battles ahead will be more brutal than any we have yet fought. Keep a vigilant eye out for both yourselves and each other. That is all. Dismissed. Guess things aren't gonna be so easy anymore. We're under some real pressure to win. out where the troops will be positioned, Claude. But, uh, are you sure about this? Am I sure about what? This isn't even remotely like a standard attack formation. It's like you're going out of your way to limit casualties. Not true. 
The moment the enemy drops their guard, we'll swarm them like a pack of bees. And if they don't drop their guard? Then I guess we'll just sit here making angry faces at each other. Okay, come on. This strategy is not helpful. Look, just by being here, we're drastically reducing the number of kingdom soldiers the Imperial Army has to deal with, right? Which means we don't have to kick our troops into action until the Empire has marched further north. Once they're positioned to seize Blathed territory, that's when we'll move. And if it all goes wrong, the losses could have catastrophic consequences for the future of the Alliance. I'm not used to you being so worried about the big picture, Hilda. You've grown. I wasn't going to stay a kid forever, you know. Apparently not. I'm impressed. Look, Hilda, I promise you, your fears are misplaced this time. The Empire's already compensated us for any potential losses, and will continue to do so. You don't think I would have signed that fancy pact if they weren't taking care of us, right? Sure, but are they good for their word? Because I have doubts about that. I want to believe the pact will hold. I really do. But they strike me as folks who won't think twice about sticking an axe between your shoulders if the situation calls for it. Fortunately, I can be pretty ruthless myself when it suits me. If I don't like something the Empire is doing, it might even be me who ends up breaking the pact. If that's supposed to make me feel better, it is absolutely not working. Easy, easy. I'm just throwing out a what if here. Just promise that you'll always have my back, even when things look their worst, all right? I need you. Oh, fine. But only because it's you. A report, Your Majesty. The Imperial Army marches on Western Fargus. Just when we'd brought peace back to the area, too. We should get ready to provide aid at once. Rodrigue has already been dispatched to Mateus, along with all the soldiers I can currently spare. And I've sent Annette and Gustav to the Baron's side, though if it's for better or worse, is yet to be seen. I don't doubt we'd all ride to the rescue if we could, but that's clearly not possible given the situation. Agreed. Now that Claude's joins up with the enemy, we can't risk doing anything foolish. If we move our soldiers even a breath away from the Northeast, the Alliance will be all over us. All we can do now is divide our forces to keep the enemy in check and meet their attacks as they come. We never should have let this happen in the first place. But who could have seen the Empire and Alliance forming such a union? Bor, are you seriously going to just stand by and watch? They'll overrun us if we don't stem the tide. Though it smacks of desperation, I'm told the Western Front has enlisted the services of Gerald's mercenaries. They're the same band that carried the battle at Magdred Way, so I hope we can make good use of them again. Is this really the plan? Burn through mercenaries while we hole up here? Do try not to be so grim. The Empire has pushed rapid reforms on the land over these last few years. Not everyone was happy to have such changes thrust upon them, and that includes their new friends in the Alliance. The Empire is leaning over the Kingdom with such greed that they might yet trip over their own feet. Do you think there will be revolts? I'm certainly not going to plan my strategy around it, but there have been whispers, yes. The old ways must die, with that I agree. But shove that down the people's throats and you risk breaking the very land you're trying to rule. Yes, we've grappled for years with the aftermath of trying to enact reform. Change is a painful process, but rushed change will set the region to rot from the inside out. I wonder why they're so intent on doing this the quick and dirty way. 
It's difficult to say. Uh, perhaps were things different, we might have found some common ground, some harmonious way forward. But I've lost too many I care about to this war. Ingrid, chief among them. <sighs> when I think about what they fought for, what they died for, there can be no turning back. The Imperial Army will soon be knocking at our door! Why haven't Duval and Dominic stopped them? Baron, you'll never reclaim the title of Viscount your Lord Uncle lost if you go weak in the knees. Letting yourself be pressured into betraying the kingdom will see you cast out of the aristocracy for the rest of time. And your fickle nature would earn you the derision of both the kingdom and the empire alike. They'll view you the same way they do Count Roe. I care not. I've no interest in going to my grave just because I drew the shortest straw. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I figured you'd want to know we finished cleaning up the enemy's advanced troops. Excellent. You certainly live up to your esteemed reputation, Captain Geralt. I've never met a more reliable band of mercenaries in all my years. It's a shame we only engaged you for the one contract. I don't suppose we could convince you to extend your term of service. His Majesty the King has heard tale of your exploits. I could arrange for an introduction. I appreciate the offer, but that would mean going to Ferdiad. Hmm. I've got reasons for avoiding that place, so thanks, but no thanks. I see. It will be a shame to lose you, but I won't pry. It's nothing against you or the kingdom, mind you. Then I'll hold out hope we might fight alongside each other again someday. Now, if you'll excuse me, the Baron and I must inspect the camp. Best of luck to you in battle, Captain. You feeling any better? <laughs> I have to say, I'm still not used to this new look of yours. That makes two of us, but it will bother me less once I'm on the battlefield. If you say so. With the war and the state it's in, the Empire is throwing everything they've got at this thing. I don't know if it's that or something else, but I've got a bad feeling. So watch yourself out there. I will. You do the same. Oh, right. <laughs> I've been meaning to give you this. Never used to be without it. Cuts like a dream. I want you to have it. Swords like this are given to captains of the Knights of Saros, and mine was just collecting dust in the band's convoy. That's right. Alois mentioned you used to serve there. That was a lifetime ago. I don't plan on swinging this sword ever again. But are you sure you want to give it away? It must be quite special to you. Uh, I'd be happiest seeing you get some use out of it. Thank you. I'll do that. Be good to it, all right? We'll soon arrive at Baron Mateus's lands. Once we claim them, all of Western Fargus Roughly one-third of the kingdom's territory will be under the rule of the Empire. House Mateus was demoted from a Viscountcy to a Baronage for their part in some sort of revolt. The current Baron Mateus, whose father was the previous Lord, is hardly the most loyal subject of the Crown. Removing him from the picture should be a simple matter. However, the kingdom has sent the Baron help in the form of the former Duke Fraldarius, who they call the Shield of Fargus. So long as he holds authority here, we won't be able to break their soldier solidarity. Rodrigue is Felix's father, right? That's unfortunate. Don't get me wrong, I'll fight whoever I need to. It just feels like we're pitted against familiar faces every time we turn around. And that isn't all. 
Our reports indicate the enemy has hired Gerald's mercenaries. We know from personal experience how formidable those foes can be. The Ashen Demon again. Say, that reminds me. What are you planning to do about that exactly? We should probably just steer clear of them entirely. There's no point throwing our lives away against an opponent we can't beat. All we've got to do is take out Baron Mateus or the Shield of Fargus, and those mercenaries will scatter to the wind. Oh, come now. You're strong enough to defeat the Ashen Demon if you want. I know you are. But if this is how you'd like to handle it, I'll still be in your corner helping you every step of the way. I possess skill at leading surprise attacks, and Bernadetta would be making a good decoy. If we are all working together, we will reach our goal with much ease. I get a say in this whole decoy plan, right? I was only saying a fact, not asking you to be doing it. Please accept my apologies. Oh, okay. I hope you plan to leave some of the enemy for me. You are all so skilled. I often feel like the fifth wheel on a well-crafted carriage. Don't downplay your talents, Ferdinand. You give us courage every time we step on the field. I'm lucky to be surrounded by so many gifted leaders. With all of you at my side, there is no limit to what the Empire might achieve in the years to come. Victory to the Empire! Yay! Come on, Arval. Seriously? You can't drag me off to sleep like this when the battle's about to start. Sorry, but we need to talk. Do you remember the warning I once gave you? Well, I've been struck by a similar premonition now. Something feels wrong. Very wrong. Last time this happened, the Ashen Demon showed up and nearly sent me to an early grave. You think the same thing's gonna happen today? Hard to say for sure. But the feeling's worse this time around. Stronger. So if I had to guess, I'd say they're on the cusp of something terrible. An act far more dangerous than we previously imagined. Whatever's happening, I'm just gonna have to stop it. So long as you don't put yourself in any unnecessary danger, yes. Remember, your death would cut both of our destinies far too short. The Empire's here! No! I'm too young to die! Now there's a beautiful man. You're the lord of these lands. Show some pride! Shore up your defenses! Do not permit the enemy to break through! If we take down the strongholds surrounding him, we might convince him to lay down his arms. Good. We've decimated the enemy's forward position. Surrounded? I beg you, stay your hand! I happily surrender! I trust the man roughly as far as I can hurl him. We may find a use for him later. We have hidden sorcery engineers in this area who are preparing a fearsome magic that will lay waste to our foes. It did not take long for the enemy to spot our engineers. We should stage a rescue if we can. It appears all the engineers are safe. Now we can truly make the battle for the sizzle. Your lightning crashing across the battlefield. What horrible thunder! This sounds like a job for Alois. Good. Alois's reinforcements have arrived. 
Might you go help our soldiers in the Northwest, young mercenary? Consider it done. I said I'd hand them the victory, and I'm not going to back down now. There's at least some of you in the If we can pin him down, I'm thanks. Watch this! I wish I had your strength. Please tell me you're not pointing that thing at my beautiful face. I heard of you during my turn. Perhaps we can forge a new arrangement that benefits us both. Well, when you put it that way. I guess I would prefer not to get butchered. I must stop the enemy here. We've cleared a way to the shoal. We can attack from the east now. Finally, form a pincer and bear down on Roderick's position from both sides. I won't last long trying to hold them off from two directions. Madrid is in danger. I'd better go back. I have to convince the Empire I'm worth keeping around. Destroy the bridge and cut the mercenaries off from the main force! The bridge? We can't get back to Madrid. Madrid has been cut off. Move in and strike before the mercenaries can rejoin us. No! This is our chance to kill the Ashen Demon. There's no one to interfere! We have to reach the Commander as soon as possible. That's one beating too many. I leave the rest to you. Forgive me, Felix. Protect his majesty. And Fargus. I'm too late. I leave to take care of one backup squad and come back to this? What a mess. Roderick is slain and the kingdom put to rout. Will you and your mercenaries yield? <sighs> I see no other choice. Victory is ours! Friends and loyal soldiers, raise your voices loud! What can I say? You got us. You rolled right over us and took out our employer. <laughs> I know when it's time to raise the white flag. Wait, that's it? You're giving up? We've faced you in battle many times, only to be bested at every turn. Yeah, you've pretty much run us out of business by now. It's not easy finding new clients in the best of times. And no matter how good our reputation is, none of it matters if we can't actually win. At this rate, I'll have to stop calling myself the Blade Breaker. In that case, do you have any interest in working for us? The Empire? Hmm. It's true that your fighters and mine have waged many a bloody battle. But did you oppose us out of principle, or was it merely a business decision? Assuming you have no deep-seated animosity for Adrestia, I would welcome you with open arms. In the Empire, those with talent are given an outlet appropriate for their abilities. Yeah, you should join us. 
I mean, by now we all know firsthand how strong you are. And sure, there might be some folks here and there who have reservations about you fighting on our side. But they'll definitely come around once they see how dependable you are. What do you say? I doubt the kingdom will have any jobs for us after all of this. No better time for a fresh start. I agree. What about you, Alois? It might be strange working against your old knight friends. I've already made my decision. I have sworn to follow this fine captain wherever he goes. If my old allies want to come grill me over a fire, I'll just have to make myself more obscure. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> if I don't slay my foes by the sword, I will do so by the joke. Well, I guess that's that. Just tell us when we start. I'll go talk to the group and smooth things over. You two, stay here with the client. Got it, thanks. Understood, Captain. Our troops will also want an explanation, so we'd better get to it. <sighs> so you're Gerald the Bladebreaker, huh? And I guess that makes you the Ashen Demon. You guys look tougher than a box of nails. No wonder we've had our hands full. Please, make yourself at home. The Imperial Army is most delighted to welcome you into its embrace. My name is Ferdinand von Eyer. You might say I am something of a leader figure around here, as I essentially hold the entire army together. Oh no! Not more strangers! Relax, Fern. It's not like you don't encounter strangers every time we take the battlefield. That's a good point. Wait, is it? Has anyone ever inspected you for crests before? Perhaps I might borrow you for a brief experiment. Are you having interest in a sword fight? I am curious to see the stuff of which you are made. Well, we sure got a lively crew here. <laughs> Get in there, kid. Let them show you the ropes. I suppose we didn't need to worry about bad blood. If anything, it would seem Her Majesty's path to victory just grew even shorter. By the way, has anyone seen our mercenary friend? Sorry about all this, Arval. I know you've only been giving me your powers because you want me to beat the Ashen Demon. Don't worry about it. It's for the best, right? For all my doomsaying, everything seems to be right as rain. Recruiting Gerald's mercenaries and the Ashen Demon was the right choice. I hope you're right. What's wrong? Feeling lost now that you don't have an enemy to chase around the countryside? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the only reason I wanted to get stronger was to surpass the demon. There's no reason you can't surpass an ally. What better way to see who's stronger than to fight directly by their side? Huh. That's a good point. See, no one knows you better than me. If that's what you want, then I'll just have to help you achieve it. After all, I'm your partner in destiny. I'm here for you and you alone. Scarlet Blaze. Heroic Bloodlines. Through a new pact with the Leicester Alliance, Edelgard can direct her might at the kingdom. And though it comes at no small price, her forces steadily gain the upper hand. But the kingdom does not stand idly by. Dimitri rallies the Western lords, 
led by House Dominic, blood of one of the ten elites, in a last-ditch effort to forestall the Empire. No, brother. Anything but that. You cannot force the relic onto Annette. Calm yourself. I've merely bade her wield it, not sent her rushing off into the teeth of the enemy. It's all right, Father. I know I'm the only one who can do this. Just seeing the Crest of Dominic and our hero's relic is going to improve everyone's morale. It shames me to thrust this task on you, when it should have fallen to that craven son of mine. Yes, I doubt we can expect Simon to return and wield the relic, considering how quickly he abandoned us. It seems I raised him poorly, yes. I should have taught him how our house managed to survive this long without starving or freezing. Don't look so sad, Uncle. I'll gladly carry the burden until Simon returns. But, Annette... Enough, Father. Stop worrying. After all, this is nothing compared to what the soldiers are going through at the front. So many people are fighting and dying out there. Some of them my good friends. I'm not going to cower in safety while they struggle. Especially when I'm in the best position to help. Forgive me, Annette. If you sense any danger at all, child, promise me that you'll run. I couldn't bear to lose you. I know, Father. So let's just all do the best we can to keep our land safe. The nearer we get to Blayford territory, the more resistance we're likely to face. The lords surrounding the capital are the most loyal to the crown. We have Geraint, Enid, Brennius, and Bellinus. There is no telling whether these houses will choose subjection or destruction. Regardless, we cannot simply ignore them as we attempt to march on the capital. We must seize control of each of their lands and establish footholds before continuing on. The Alliance is still doing everything we expected of them. There are no changes on that front. So as long as we continue tightening the vice around the kingdom, we're certain to fulfill your majesty's goals. Glad to hear it about the Alliance. Does this mean the war will be over soon? I feel some actual motivation coming on! Well, in that case... Nope, nope, never mind, motivation gone. That was a close one, Bernadetta. You almost got yourself assigned to the front lines. As for me, you know what to do. Just put me right at the front and let me start wrecking stuff. We shall see who does more wrecking of stuff, Kaspar. I will not be letting you outshine me. Watch as I am bringing glory to Bridget and the Empire on the battlefield. <laughs> I wonder if I'll find someone worth marrying before this war is over. Enough! It's easy to let your guard down when the end is in sight, and we can't fall victim to that. Stay disciplined, and together we will take Fodlan's future in hand. Don't worry, Edelgard. We're ready to get this done. Right then. Let's start by taking care of the enemy in front of us. Hubert, have you learned anything about my father's whereabouts? Nothing. We've not the faintest idea what he is up to. If we are lucky, he will be naught but a corpse by the wayside. I know that sounds cruel, but frankly, his death would do us a great service. You remain as blunt as the blacksmith's anvil. Still, I cannot deny the truth of what you say. I still think it for the best if he is taken into custody and given a fair trial under imperial law. And yet... At times, a different thought manages to creep in around the edges of my mind. There is a part of me 
A very small part, granted. That hopes he has found a quiet life for himself somewhere out of the way. The man can strive for a bucolic life all he wants, but he will never have it. Adrastia looks to be at peace, but beneath the surface, many disagree with the Emperor's ways. Make no mistake. These dissidents will seek out your father and prop him up as their leader. Yes, I suppose he will never stop being the former Prime Minister and a symbol of the old regime. But to frame it as you do... I am right, and you know it. Make your peace with it. Once a man strays from the path, there is no guiding him back. I disagree. I believe we all deserve a second chance. In any case, if you find out anything about my father, be sure to inform me. I almost wish they did prop the man up. Because perhaps then... Ah. But no. Either way, it seems I will have to start taking more serious precautions. I only hope he can settle things with his father in one manner or the other. Just as I did. Our recent battles have won nearly all of the kingdom's central and western lords to our side. Those who chose not to bend the knee are making their last stand in that castle. They are weary men, unable to keep pace with the times. And now we can be rid of them all in but a single stroke. They had plenty of chances to surrender and chose not to avail themselves thus. Show no mercy. If they wish to cling to the past, let them die in its embrace. I wish they'd consider all the poor souls they're forcing to perish along with them. Sure, but I fully understand why they'd want to hole up in a castle. That's my go-to move. They are beneath a siege, not holed up. The difference is unequivocal. Sorry, what? Unequivocal. It is a new word I have been learning. Its meaning is clear and unambiguous, yes? Again, what? Look, the way I see it, we just need to bust through the gates and pummel the stuffing out of them. It unfortunately is not that simple. Most of the kingdom's castles are specifically designed to withstand a siege. Our only option is to chip away at them slowly from the surrounding forts. I agree there is no place for mercy on the battlefield. The enemy desires a fight. We will rend them asunder and leave their bones on the midden heap. We need to move carefully. A cornered foe is capable of anything. Oh, come on. We'll have these nobodies cleared out before dinner. I hope you're ready to back that boast with action. It's time. All units to positions. Prepare to attack! As we thought, they've made Baron Dominic their figurehead because of his blood ties to the Ten Elites. But frankly, his lineage is of no concern to me. Your orders are to bring the castle, find him, and cut him down. We will begin by eliminating the troops outside the castle. Split up and take control of those strongholds. No one will ravage these lands while I still draw breath. I will lay the lot of you low. Much time as they can. That is all the fight I have left in me. I 
pray it was enough, my brother. Watch over the people with fathers. They never wanted this bloodshed, but now there is no stop. We've underestimated our foes. Send word to Duke Ivan and Count Karen and have them send reinforcements. My strength, please. The rest is in your hands. I'm in. Baron Dominic, surrender, and I will spare your life. My life means nothing if I must spend the rest of it facing my people in shame. I will not abandon them in their time of need. I will not suffer you to lay a hand on my brother. My turn. Watch this. Let us see. Your Majesty, I pray you deliver our kingdom to peace. I shall have Puppet! No! Fine then. I will finish what you started. I'm not afraid to fight. I'm doing this for all the people I care about. Move she wields a hero's relic. It could serve us well in the future. The secret passage is useless now. I promise to defend this castle, and I will. No matter who I have to face. The others are out here risking life and limb, and I can't let them down. I'm sorry, Father. I did everything in my power, but it just wasn't enough. Not you as well. How will I ever tell your mother? Alas, poor Gustav. And now I, too, go to battle for the last time. Sealed. We will fight to the very last. Such this resistance. Seize the remaining strongholds and let us nip this problem in the bud once and for all. Seize every last enemy position. Brook no resistance. Everyone, this will deal a crushing blow to the kingdom. Our campaign is not over, but for now, we celebrate. And so I reach my end. Pray forgive me my weakness, Your Majesty. Annette, Gustav, forgive me. They deified him for being the descendant of a hero. And in return, he got a life he could never control, and a death he could never ordain. Yet surely the man was happy to die for his people. He must have felt as though he had fulfilled his set purpose in life. That notion alone should tell you how warped the world has become. Still, right and wrong are spoils to be handed out by the victor of this war. Well said, Your Majesty. We must prevail if we are to change the world. 
This war is only the first step. I get it now. I beg your pardon. Everything's finally clicked for me. I understand what we're really up against here. Oh? I told you before, I don't always get where you're coming from. Still, you trusted me, and that was enough. But what you said just then... It made me realize we're not fighting the church or the kingdom. I mean, we are, of course. But what we're really up against is the world itself. And even if we win, there's no guarantee we'll leave Fodlin better than we found it. All we can do is try our best and hope it works out. Pretty hard to wrap your brain around, honestly. I can't even begin to fathom how you can grapple with something that heavy. <laughs> Once again, you managed to find a most surprising nugget of philosophy. I knew you'd understand. Even if I can't point to the reason why I felt that way. But I'm glad to hear you say it. Thank you. Imperial soldiers! The lands of Brynius now belong to us! As you know, Brynius shares a border with Blathed territory. The enemy's stronghold of Ferdiad is but a stone's throw away. At long last, we approach the final push of this campaign. Stay vigilant, but be not afraid. We shall wield our weapons as one, claim our victory, and unite all of Bodlin under our flag! Blathed land at last. The kingdom will be more desperate than ever now. As they should be. We have stripped away nearly half of their territory at this point. But we still have the remaining houses to contend with. Karen, Galatea, Fraldarius, and Gautier are all unshakably faithful to the crown. They would tear us to pieces had they the chance. Certainly not my idea of a fun afternoon. Still, we have no choice but to face them unless they decide to stop harboring the Archbishop. Do you think that's even a possibility? The people of the kingdom are quite devout after all. I highly doubt it. So let them huddle together like the cornered rats they are, and... Hmm? Huh? What's going on? Urgent news, my lord. Massive revolts have broken out in Hrim and Ordelia territory. What? Did you say Hrim? Uh, where's Hrim again? The eastern edge of the Empire, north of Ayr, along the Aramid River. And Ordelia Land is across the bank in Alliance territory. It's also where Lysithia is from. And as far as I know, her parents are still there. Unrest in both the Empire and the Alliance? This can't be a coincidence. So... Those who slither in the dark have finally made their move. This is it. This is our chance to figure out who or what those people really are. Scarlet Blaze. The Rising Darkness. Having smashed the kingdom's last desperate defense, the Empire takes the battle north. Further pressure from the Alliance to the east forces King Dimitri to make a difficult choice. Will the Empire and Alliance prevail and unite Fodlan? Just as all begin to entertain the possibility, those most opposed to the idea finally emerge from the shadows. Apparently, it started with attacks by bandits and insurgents, which touched off a widespread revolt. 
The people have taken to the streets, and now Hrim and Ordelia territory are in total chaos. We have no choice but to intervene. At present, it is just Hrim territory. But if the unrest spreads to neighboring Imperial lands, there will be no water cask large enough to quench the flames. Especially if the fires were intentionally set. And yet, redeploying our forces to deal with the unrest could be exactly what they're after. I believe it is, Your Majesty. With the aid of the Alliance, we were on the brink of securing the Kingdom's surrender. The war was all but decided. It seems certain parties were not at all happy with that particular arrangement. You can't exactly wage a war when your own land's falling apart at the seams. No one is more reluctant than I am to turn back when victory is within our grasp. But it is the only option. Fortunately, the Kingdom now lacks the soldiers to take advantage and regain their lost territory. We'll leave enough troops to hold the line and take the main force east at speed. I'll have Count Burglies take position at Aryan Road. That sounds exhausting. But you're the boss. Do you mind if I just link off to my room and... Oh, here come the dagger eyes. Never mind. If it's settled, let's not waste another second. Every moment we delay means more suffering for the innocent people who are caught up in this. Going to Hrimland will take us close to Ire. Needless to say, I am in favor of departing at once. Let's go find the masterminds behind this mess and send them to meet their maker. But how will we be telling the innocent people from those who are causing trouble? A fair point. If we're too reckless, many good people are going to be killed. Only one thing to do. Let's get to Hrim territory and sort this out. Want to know what you two are talking about? Is it not obvious? We are debating who might be behind the recent disturbance in the peace. The slithery people, right? Correct. Absurdly phrased, but correct. We may have ousted Lord Arendelle and the others from power in Enbar. But we knew it was not the end of their vile schemes. Which is why we have been preparing for the day they bared their fangs once more. Granted, we lack solid proof they are behind this. But it is the most likely explanation considering the scale of the revolts, as well as where and when they all occurred. I'll keep that in mind on the battlefield. Oh, and for the record, I like this part where you all trust me enough to tell me what's going on. A strategy I strongly oppose. But Her Majesty insisted we keep you in the loop. Must you always antagonize Hubert? I merely state fact. Though I will admit you saved the Emperor's life, once. Still. I would not be shocked in the slightest if you suddenly changed your colors and tried to kill her. Yet sharing such knowledge with you achieves a dual purpose. It helps prevent those who slither in the dark from using you, and it gives ample justification to dispose of you, should you betray us. You still don't trust me after all this time. What exactly is it gonna take? You may not have Hubert's trust, but you have mine. I'll be counting on you as always in the battles to come. If those who slither in the dark appear, we must strike them down. Everywhere you turn, you see another gruesome sight. Look what they've done to the homes, the fields, 
The people. These bandits are like rats. They're nothing alone, but if you let them band together... I've been here before. It was a long time ago, sure. But I can't believe this is all that's left. Apparently, the first thing they did was find and kill Viscount Prim Standin, along with the rest of the local magistrates. With no one in charge, the bandits have taken free reign of the place. Assassinations, too? They've cut us deep, indeed. But why were they killing the leaders instead of taking them hostage? Are they not wanting control of the land? It would seem their interest is little more than unadulterated chaos. Someone clearly does not wish Fodlin to be united beneath the Empire's flag. This is a sick way to show it, though I imagine there is a method to their madness. Even I won't let myself run away from a situation like this! We need to restore order as quickly as possible and return to the Kingdom Front. Once I've brought an end to the war, I will never permit something this ghastly to happen again. We're too late, Professor! She's the only one left! What an abhorrent sight! I'm so sorry, but your boy is... He's gone. Please live on. Come with us. Leone, will you take her? I'll check down the other way. Come with me, ma'am. It'll be all right. We got more bandits! They're kidnappers! Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Come on, we need to move. We are hopelessly outnumbered. It seems these streets will be my grave. Uh, this town's even worse than the others. Quickly. Wait, is that... Professor Hanneman? Does that fool really think he can contain this alone? Everyone, to me. We're mounting a rescue. I will not lose one more innocent life today. These monsters are gonna pay. This is a rescue first and foremost. We must save the townsfolk from danger, as well as the brave fighters defending them. Remember, the perpetrators of this atrocity may be hiding amidst the chaos. If you find them, they are to be shown no mercy. To protect the evacuees, we must defend the shelter at all costs. Stay on your guards. How many of these ruffians are there? I can't protect everyone forever. Professor Hanneman is in trouble. Hurry, we can't afford to lose him. You came to help! And you brought the Empire with you! You did well, Leone! It's time we fight together! I never doubted you would come. Yes, that was certainly close. I am much obliged for your assistance. Thank goodness we got to Professor Hammond in time. The double I planted turned out to be a stroke of genius. Now to take my leave while the taking is still good. Wait, so the other guy was a fake? No, there! You paid for that! I can't take much more of this! Take this! Open up! Open up, I say! This is not what we agreed to, so open up right now! Do you know? It seems the lights are falling out. Shall I go put him out of his misery? I should have stayed a merchant. The money came easier. <laughs> Kill that man. 
and strip his bones of whatever you can find. Save your breath. You'll need to scream as I tear your limbs from your body. You do realize you're dead. to slither in the dark. Demonic beast, eh? Later they have been quite eager to spring this little surprise on us. We can't allow any more damage to the town. We must eliminate the monster ourselves. Is this poison? You cowards lease your weapons. Sorry for the trouble. If I survive this, can I fight with you? There is always a place for a gifted ally such as yourself. This is a tricky poison indeed. And while I'm no specialist, I will do everything in my power. Watch yourselves! This menace will not go down so easily. You're done! doesn't mean stronger, we can definitely take Take this! Don't give him a chance to retaliate! We've come a long way together. This spell creature is no match for us! I should have known these thugs would serve as little more than bait. My name is Solon, and I am the savior of this beast-infested world. itself ere long. We knew he would try to escape, yet still we cannot stop him. This should put an end to the disturbance in town. You all fought bravely.
We have finished assessing the damage, and it is a grim picture indeed. Thanks to the swift action of our rescuers, we were able to free the abducted townsfolk. However, there are still countless victims who have lost their homes and families. The bandits are targeting the most populous towns here. And it appears the Alliance is dealing with the same problem across the river in Ordelia land. I can't give back what they lost. All I can do is give them the time they need to heal and rebuild. Yet perhaps the most vexing part is that Solon and the others slithered out of our grasp again, and we barely know more about them than when we started. My apologies, Your Majesty. Their warping magic is unlike the white magic we know, and as yet cannot be disrupted or thwarted. Additionally, a town such as this gives them far too many places to hide. I'm not blaming you, Hubert. The guy didn't even seem phased by us. What do you think they're after? Nothing savory. That much is certain. I've heard enough. Proceed as we discussed. Make sure the survivors have everything they need to carry on. Edelgard, why was it so important for us to suddenly convene like this? We are quite busy preparing to remobilize the troops, you know. Ah, Ferdinand. Have you not noticed the flock of messengers coming and going? I doubt anyone's missed it with all the commotion they're causing. What happened? I am sorry you have to repeat your report. But would you mind telling everyone here what you told us? I come with a most urgent message from Burgley's territory. Fort Mercius has been seized. It happened after most of the garrison left to deal with Frimlands. Apparently, some of the remaining troops staged a rebellion from within. At the same time, the fort was besieged by unidentified mages, along with the army of the former Duke Iyer. Together, they managed to reach the heart of the fortress and seize control. As we speak, they hold hostage many key commanders and their families. Iyer? Then the man behind all this is... The former Duke himself, my lord. It seems he's come out of hiding. I see. <sighs> They're using the hostages as leverage over our loyal soldiers to force them into their ranks. It seems they intend to use the fort as a launch point for a march on the capital. Wait, what? That's catastrophic! My brother is stationed at Fort Mercius. Is he even doing anything about it? Count Burgley's successor, who was serving as the Provisional Garrison Commander, was taken prisoner. Apparently he made the prudent decision of refusing to join the Rebellion. Not sure if that's good news or bad news, but I know I'm glad he's not dead. The former Duke Iyer has vowed to overthrow the Emperor, and is even now calling on the other Lords to join the cause. To my knowledge, there have been no takers so far, but given time, who can say? There is no shortage of rotten nobles, whose status and interests were set aside by Her Majesty's reforms. There is unrest ahead in the Empire. Make no mistake. As if we haven't dealt with a lifetime's worth already. Obviously, these people don't care about anyone but themselves. This is calling for swift action. We must retake the fort with quickness. Our fortunes continue taking one poor turn after another. Still, there's nothing for it. We must deal with Iyer's machinations immediately and decisively. Try to look on the bright side, Your Majesty. This could be our chance to dispose of everyone who opposes you in one fell swoop. Scarlet Blaze, severing the past.
After a furious march, Edelgard's army restores a measure of peace to the imperiled lands of Hrim, only to learn of a revolt at Fort Mercius, staged by the deposed Duke Eyre. The disturbance in Hrim was but a feint to give those who slither in the dark time to capture Mercius, and eventually the capital of Enbar. But Edelgard moves to thwart them. Have you heard, Duke Iyer? Viscount Menya has hastened from afar to join your cause. Our houses, Fenya and Menya, share a distant blood ancestor. And now we stand together again to save the Empire from her plight. Hastened from afar with what? That miserable smattering of soldiers. From what I hear, Menya's heir is a rabid supporter of the Emperor. Are you certain the father is not being foisted on us just to get him out of the picture? Absolutely not. And besides, all of House Fenya is united behind you. If we appeal to the other lords jointly, I'm certain a multitude of troops will flock to Fort Mercius. I should hope so. I've no idea why they'd side with that pathetic excuse for an emperor. Only I, Ludwig von Eyre, can restore Adrestia to its former glory. About those mages, they say they want to, uh, alter the fort's defenses? Fine, fine. Let them do as they wish. So long as we're outnumbered, we must embrace creative solutions. Edelgard will strike the moment we give any indication we're after the capital. We'll lure her troops inside, then dispose of them all at once. It will be an easy victory. I always knew you were a brilliant tactician. They will never see it coming. Now, if we might discuss key posts in your future administration. I can only hope Her Majesty is weak and foolish enough to be so ensnared. It was never my intent to divide the Empire in war. That's not what I wanted. If she'd said one word, one word, indicating there might be a place for me, None of this would have been necessary. Enough. I must purge my mind of such thoughts. I must win. I must prevail over her. And if I cannot, you must be the one to cut me down, Ferdinand. Edelgard, do you have a moment? Of course, Ferdinand, but please keep it short. It is about my father. My pleas for a fair trial cost you time and delayed his sentencing. It also gave the Knights of Saros an opening to conduct their raid, which provided him ample opportunity to stage an escape. I am to blame for all that has transpired. Let me hurry you along to the point, if I may. What are you going to do about it? Or, more likely, what do you want me to do about it? Put me in the field when we retake Fort Mercius, and permit me to rectify my own mistake. Will you allow me that? <sighs> I was wondering when you'd ask. Don't worry, I've already made the arrangements. But you mustn't do anything reckless. You will stick to the battle plan, and that is a direct order. Ah, Edelgard, you are the very picture of reason, the very epitome of wise stewardship. Enough. You can gush over me after the battle if you still feel the urge. We've no idea how things will go after all, and you may be in a very different mood. True. All the same, I am grateful. Thank you. You can come out, Hubert. I know you're listening. 
I came to give you the latest report, Your Majesty, but decided to wait until this other business reached its conclusion. Then you know what must be done. Make sure he's given protection. Oh, I will if I find the time. You do keep me quite busy, after all. You've found a way to take care of them? I can assure you, those Cretans will rue ever setting foot in Her Majesty's fortress. They wanted thick walls, and we will give them the thickest ones a coffin can provide. This is our chance to decimate the forces of those who slither in the dark. have returned from Fort Mercius. There's less movement than we anticipated. That likely means the former Duke Iyer wants us to attack the fortress to make up for his disadvantage in troop strength. The numbers don't lie. One needs three times the forces of their enemy to claim a castle in a siege. Although, that's if you attempt to take it head on. So, do we have a plan or what? I mean, Fort Mercius is basically impenetrable. <laughs> Actually, this one time we came home well after curfew and had to try and sneak back in. Turns out there was no way in. The guards mistook us for bandits, and Father shouted at us until he lost his voice. <sighs> good times. The good news is that we have learned of a passage into the fort which has been kept secret since its construction. The bad news is that I are likely also learned of the passage when he was Prime Minister. Unless his reason has completely taken flight, the man will take some sort of measures to defend it. The fortress is huge in size. We should organize small teams and be attacking from many points. If we achieve success, we can open the gates from the inside and be giving the enemy a surprise. It only serves other regions if the Empire starts shedding Empire blood. We should find a resolution that minimizes casualties on both sides. Um, is this the part where I chime in? Because, um, if you want to coax someone out of hiding, breaking down the door is the wrong way to go about it. That'll only push them further into their shells, so... I think we should try talking to them instead. Is it just me, or is our corner of the world an uncontrolled mess? Why don't we just put all of your plans into action? We've got the numbers to do it. We can sneak soldiers in, use the secret passage, talk it out, and apply brute force all at the same time. As long as one of those approaches works, we'll win. That's actually not a bad plan, and it didn't even come from me. Amazing! I mean, the brute force part is a little risky, but I dare say, you're learning. Hmm. An intriguing idea. But what about the hostages? If we force our way in, they're likely to be killed. I will not permit that to happen. And while my father may be a fallen noble, he is still a noble, and not the sort of man to start butchering innocent people when the tides turn. I pray you are right, Ferdinand. Though I believe you never know what a person is capable of until they act. We will proceed with this plan at once, adapting as the situations dictate. We cannot fail. Not here. Not now. Everyone is prepared, it's time to make our move. Our troops attacking the gates have been instructed not to force their way in. Before long, the enemy will notice as much and realize we're already inside. We need to locate and strike down the rebel leader. That should put an end to the insurrection. Along the way, you may encounter suspicious agents. 
They are the true masterminds behind the rebellion, and must all be eradicated. Got it. Now let's get going before those bloodthirsty monsters hurt any of the hostages. I haven't been this angry in a long time. When is that man going to stop being a thorn in Her Majesty's side? Ah, how splendid. But do try not to become so flush with rage that you make a foolish error. Perhaps if you grew flush with rage every now and again, you wouldn't have the complexion of a coffin dweller. Quiet, both of you. You don't have to do this, Ferdinand. You can always stay back if you have doubts. No. Fate put me on this path. And now, I must walk it. Enemy soldiers have breached our fortifications! To arms! Defend the glory of the Empire! It seems we all lose already. Prepare to take the fortress! Mercenaries are no better than common bandits. How could my father make a deal with such a pack of rogues? Looks like this ain't your lucky day. And who not if it's magic walls or what have you? If you get in the way of Her Majesty, you will pay. Pay attention now. <laughs> Fools. And to think I was entertaining the idea of letting you scamper away. What was that attack? <laughs> I give you the Viscum. I hope you like being roasted alive, because that's exactly what's about to happen to you. <laughs> no more heroes! So I've been defanged. They got him? I do not appreciate that. Yeah, right. That's it! I'm going to rip you apart myself! Hey! Why can you wield that power, huh? Who even are you? Why don't you tell me? You seem to know more than enough about it already. from those shifty vermin. And here I am, with the cold embrace of the grave covering at my shoulder. It's coming. Conjure magic shield to safeguard our comrades. Your Majesty, forgive my lateness. The outer defenses only just fell. On the contrary, your timing is perfect. Is that Voldemort? Curse Why must he always show up at the worst possible moment and ruin everything? I don't know how we made it, but we did. Well, that was an impeccably staged entrance. Were you just biding your time in order to put on the best show possible? You know, Linhart, there are times you take after me. And then there's most of the time. My dreams of glory. Why? Viscount Fenya, Viscount Menya, forgive me. I'm coming for you, father. Leave the enemy no place to hide. Seize every key position in the fortress. The enemy is getting too close to Duke Iron. We must hurry to his side. Out of the way! It's too far too late now. My name is Ludwig von Eyre. I see the Empire in the throes of a terrible sickness. And I intend to cure it or die in the attempt. That is enough. There is no escape for you. 
<laughs> Go on then. I'll leave for you the final blow. You leave me nothing. This was ever my burden to bear. Father! No, you are just a traitor now. <sighs> In light of your crimes against the Empire, the punishment is death! <laughs> Send a runner to House Menya, and have them deliver the letter I drafted. Also, take the soldiers under your command, and begin investigating any magic constructs abandoned by the enemy. At once, Lord Hubert. It must be awful to end your own parents' life. Come on, Ferdinand. Let's get going. No. You may continue without me. I would like to stay here a moment. Just a moment longer. Hubert, we have a messenger from the Alliance, and I need to know where our Western campaign stands. Ferdinand, may I have a word? I thought I'd let you decide how to punish your father's followers now that they've surrendered. Uh. Furthermore, this incident has led to the end of Fenya and several other noble houses. We need to settle the matter of the next Duke Iyer, and we need to do so quickly. So if you don't mind... Is this your attempt at solace, Edelgard? What? I will punish the troops, and I will find a way to administer my father's lands. You can trust in me, Your Majesty. And thank you for considering my feelings on the matter. I never expected we'd have our hands this full after returning from Fargus. Still, we've managed to quell the turmoil and maneuver our way back to Enbar. Due to the valiant efforts of Count Berglis and his Aryan Road garrison, the Kingdom's counter-offensive has hardly put a dent in the Western Lines. I wager the reinforcements reached them in time. It's a good thing we do not have to maintain a large military presence in Leicester. But of course, that was Her Majesty's plan all along. We'd be up to our shoulders in trouble if we hadn't settled hostilities with the Alliance. Do you think people in the Empire will be all right? I'm worried about the Opera Company, of course, but... I'd also be devastated if anything happened to my friends in the capital. The end result of all this was the complete expurgation of the Empire's remaining dissidents. <laughs> in a way, we should be thanking them for handing us this opportunity on a gilded platter. Adrestia deserves some stability for a change, so I think it's good that Her Majesty has total power now. With the opposing nobles wiped out, it's a breath of fresh air after the way things were under the old Emperor. Lynn, think about who's here. It is all right, Dorothea. I have moved on. It's funny, though. I was sure my father would take part in the rebellion, but he just didn't. I mean, I feel like all he ever did was complain about Her Majesty, you know? I guess he was so scared of the church that he decided to stay holed up in Garrick Mach. What is our next action, Lady Edelgard? If we are returning to the Western Front, I will have preparedness. Fighting your own people sure takes the thrill out of battle. So let's go wall up the kingdom instead and put an end to all this. Who's with me? All that remains is for Adrestia to claim victory. And along those lines, I wish to present an idea. One last stratagem to ensure that we prevail.
successful in striking down Cronia at Fort Mercius. However, Lord Arendelle, which is to say Talus, remains at large, and any schemes Solon may be plotting are so much conjecture in the wind. Still, his efforts in Hrim territory effectively empowered the late Duke Eyre to stage a coup. Whatever the case, he must have a very good reason for seeking to prevent the kingdom's fall. But why would they help the people who are harboring the Archbishop? It makes no sense. Unless their aim is simply to prevent the war from ending by any means possible. We know the kingdom's court mage, Cornelia, is connected to those who slither in the dark. They may have planted other associates in Fargus as well. If they already have the King's Court dancing on strings, it stands to reason they would focus their attention on obstructing the Empire. I agree the theory hangs together, but does that mean we should expect more interference? We should, Your Majesty. Though I would at least like to think they no longer have anyone left who can act brazenly in the open. And need we worry about our mercenary friend? I was under the assumption that they had your implicit trust. Absolutely, but not enough to purge all of the doubt from my heart. I once trusted my uncle, as well as the late Duke Eyre, and he wasn't even replaced with a doppelganger. People who come in contact with those who slither in the dark are not the same afterward. How am I to trust anyone in a world where such a thing can happen? I do not disagree, Your Majesty. Yes, well, we must remain vigilant until the war is over for good and all. Although I wonder if we can rest easy even then. We still don't really know much about Solon, Kranya, and Talus. I was thinking this would be a chance to learn about my power, or who you actually are. But oh well. Oh well. Is that all you have to say for yourself? I mean, I'm still curious, but my attention right now is on the battles ahead. And hey, it's not like knowing the truth would change much for you anyway. Even if I am related to those slithering people somehow, it's not like I'd want to split up with you. That's music to my ears. It's incredible to see just how fast you've matured. Makes me proud to call you my partner in destiny. <laughs> Is this what being a parent feels like? Uh, yeah. I guess. Anyway, this war will be over soon. So let's do what we've got to do to see it through together. I'll be counting on you, Arval. Scarlet Blaze. Torment of the Ego and Lion. Edelgard succeeds in containing Ayer's insurgency. And while she is concerned by the absence of the nefarious Tallis, she prepares her army for the next step regardless. The time is nigh to crush the kingdom and central church's growing momentum and put an end to the war once and for all. I've gathered you here in Garrick Mock because the time has come. We are returning to the front. Oh yeah, I've been waiting to hear that forever! Let's go wreck things! For the next phase of our campaign, we'll be working with the Alliance's leader, Claude, to tighten our cordon around the Kingdom. Rather than try to advance on the Western Front, we'll join forces with the Alliance and press in from the East. This means we'll be marching northeast from the Monastery and infiltrating Galatea. I hope we can finally end it this time. I don't think I can deal with doubling back again. Agreed. This slog has slogged on long enough. Worry not, friends. 
I'll not be blindsided twice. I promise you that. We won't rest until all of Fodlan is united. We will fight tooth and nail for it, and we'll do so together. So, we're finally dusting off our armor and going somewhere, huh? You must really want to end this war if you're letting the two of us loose on the kingdom. Quite right, Captain Geralt. We will not accept anything less than the fall of the royal capital. You and your mercenaries will be marching with us. This is not a problem, I trust. Let's just say I have a history with someone at the capital and leave it at that. But if the time's come for me to sort that out, then so be it. In any case, we're ready to go, right, kid? We'll earn our keep. Gotta say, I'm excited to be fighting with you for a change. We made some headway on the Western Front once the Empire pulled its main force back. What does it matter when their Minister of Military Affairs still holds Aryan Road? Even if we were in a position to keep throwing troops at those walls, we're never going to crack them. But if we keep digging our heels in here, their main force will be on us again in no time. It appears they have already dealt with the insurrection at Fort Mercius. If they don't come at us from the west, they'll soon waltz right in from the east. Might I offer a suggestion, King Dimitri? Of course, Lady Rhea. We should retake Garrett Mark. It is the only way to reverse our current fortunes. If I call upon the Church's faithful, they will come running from every corner of Fodlan to liberate the monastery in the Goddess's name. With Garrett Mark under our control, we will be able to keep the Imperial Army in check. Additionally, it might convince some of the more fickle Alliance Lords to reconsider their loyalties. I mean no disrespect, Lady Rhea, but this proposal hardly seems... There is more. As you know, the Bishop of the Southern Church is currently seated at the Monastery. If we remove him, it reminds the world anew that Archbishop Rhea is the rightful head of the Church of Saros. I believe this will shake some of the more devout Adrestian lords from their Emperor's grip. While their faith may waver now, Adrestia is still the cradle of the Church of Seros. There are yet many pious believers among their nobility. If we can pull them to our side, it may shift the war back in our favor. We should strike while the iron is hot. I will get the word out at once. Hold, Lady Rhea. While I now concede that your plan to retake the monastery has some merit, I must ask that you alert no one. And why not? I need only say the word, and an army of believers will flock to our cause. Yes, and the moment the enemy spies people flooding in from across Hill and Dale, they'll realize what we're planning and bolster their defenses. You believe their defenses are mightier than the faith of the people? By the goddess, have our enemies truly become so powerful? In that case, what do you propose? We entrust the eastern lines to houses Karen and Galatea, then ride in mass toward Arian Road. The enemy will think we intend to assail the Silver Maiden, but instead we break east. East? Then we'll be attacking the monastery through the Valley of Torment. I get your thinking now. If we attack from the west, Aryan Road would be at our backs, and the Empire could box us in. Very well. I have no objections. My church members will assist in guiding your soldiers through ALL. The monastery is holy and precious to us, and by the name of the Goddess, I swear, it will be ours again. Good. Then I'll ready the troops. Lady Rhea, Seteth, I place all of our futures in your hands.
Long story short, the kingdom is preparing to ride west with a huge army. It looks like they're gonna throw everything they've got at Aryan Road. Yes, we have received similar reports. It's a pretty strange thing to do. I don't trust it. Then you believe it to be a feint? Interesting. Well, if true, there are only so many places they could go. They cannot ignore our troops and attempt to take Deirdre. That would be folly. So the only other place I can imagine they would be after is Garrick Mark. That's what I was thinking. So what's our play? We can't risk losing the monastery. We'll have to send more troops to defend it. But at the same time, we can't unclench the fist we are trying to bring down on the kingdom. Our only choice is to mobilize the full resources of our regions. Spoken like a woman with might to spare. I'm afraid we in the Alliance are already at our limits. But hear me out for a second. If the Kingdom really intends to attack Eric Mach, they won't approach from the West. That would put them smack between your forces in Aryan Road and the Monastery. It'd be suicide. That leaves them with only one option. You're saying they'll take the Northern approach through Aelau? Yep, the Valley of Torment, which just so happens to be the route we were planning to use ourselves. The Church of Saros will likely mobilize every knight they've got, and that is a very big army. Supposing you are correct, what do you suggest we do in response? Should we change our marching route to avoid clashing with them? Nope. In fact, I vote we do the opposite. The Kingdom will catch on no matter how we try to deploy our troops, so I say let's meet them right there in Aelow. Interesting. But the valley path is treacherous and difficult to navigate, which will blunt the impact of our superior numbers. Why would we play into the enemy's hands like that? Because sometimes trying to claim every advantage can be a double-edged sword. Leveling the playing field can often be the key to bringing an opponent down, especially if you know you can handle it. Besides, what better way to keep casualties to a minimum than by finishing them off in one battle? You know how to convince me. Very well. I can get behind this plan. Hmm. Is there anything you would like to add, Hilda? You appear to be deep in thought. Huh? Who, me? Nah, no, I'm good. I'm just standing in because Clot asked me to. If it brings the war to an end quicker, I am all for it. We will reach ALL soon. The Kingdom and Church approach from the West, and our friends in the Alliance from the East. We know their movements so we need to assume they also know ours. This final battle will be intense and bloody, but no matter what happens, we must emerge victorious. At the very least, we have numbers on our side. Though the kingdom has all of those heroes' relics, that can't be good for us. We must keep our eyes open, and we must stay on the same page. We can't have anyone rushing ahead to fashion themselves a hero. I'd say things are really heating up, but that's just the ground literally burning. It's sweltering. Whose idea was it to wage a battle in this place again? I will take heat over cold every day. Cold has its way of slowing you down. I'm fine with hot or cold, so long as it's in the comfort of my own room with the door locked. Do the words final, bloody, or battle not make you even the slightest bit nervous? Take this seriously. Show your pride as members of an army which serves the greatest empire the world has ever known. No need to get everyone worked up, Ferdy. When you dislike war as much as I do, you start to appreciate the lighter moments. <laughs> I am inclined to agree. Now, 
What do you say we show these adherents to the status quo a taste of true power? They don't stand a chance. To arms, then. Today we claim our victory for the good of all. the Alliance, the Kingdom, even the forces of the Church. To think we would all meet in such a cramped locale. Hold on. Does anyone actually see the Knights of Seros amidst all this? I wonder if they're not even here to begin with. We strike at the Imperial Army today. Do not let the Alliance distract you. Yes, as you command. The party's already starting, huh? It's too bad we couldn't throw it for something a little more civilized. Would it kill you to be serious for once, Claude? For the last time, Flane, I am against this. It is not too late to retreat. And for the last time, I intend to fight. Besides, it would seem the battle is about to begin. Well then, just give the command, Edelgard. Good. Our very hope depends on you. Brave warriors of Adrestia, the time has come to demonstrate the Empire's valor, to prove our supremacy. Any who dare stand in our way must be cut down. Now! As one, attack! I'll be counting on the Alliance's wisdom and strength this day, Claude. Don't worry, our brilliant teamwork will send them scattered. Shore up our defenses, then advance on the enemy's forward position. My turn. I'll carve my way right through them. I'm still on my feet, and I can still hold a sword. Which means I can keep fighting. <laughs> you think a few nicks and scratches will send me packing? Stand down, Felix. <laughs> It's a wonder you can still stand. Now would you please let us handle the rest? You better come back alive, Sylvain, or else. I hope you're watching, Ingrid. Today is the day I avenge you. We gained an early event. Well fought, one and all. I hope you're ready to part with your head. Because I mean to lay it at my friend's grave. Take a breather. This is nothing compared to the pain she felt. Out of the way! Here it comes! You're done! Out of the way! Forgive me, your majesty. May fortune favor you in battle. You too, Sylvain. What am I supposed to do now? Watch this! We keep this up. The battle may be over before it can even begin. This 
unnerving how well we're doing. I hope that means we're headed for a quick victory. <laughs> we can probably secure a crossing if we find a way to stop the lava. I will heal your wounds. Please, be careful out there. This should be of use. Oh, please. What is this? The second coming of Saint Cephalene? Strike her down and put an end to her already. Why must you hurt each other like this? You are all brothers and sisters. I cannot take much more. Yet the others will be in grave danger if I flee. Flame, no more. Get to safety. Very well, brother. But you must swear not to put yourself in unnecessary danger. Witness my true power! No escape! I'm not letting up until it's over. In the name of his majesty, you will perish here. One of them will yield to me, or they shall perish. Courage now! The time has come to bring our war with the kingdom to its end. King Dimit I've got Atreus keeping the Empire busy. Break through them to pieces! <laughs> Intercept at once. I was wondering when Seth would show up, and wouldn't you know it, there he is. Our magic is depleted. Retreat! Take careful aim now. Don't let any of them breach the defensive line. hope for ordinary officers to stop him. Right when I was so close to ending her. 
He came at us like a maelstrom, but we managed to take the wind out of his sails. We drove off the kingdom in the central church. It's a start, but... But this war is not over. We will hunt Dimitri down and put an end to the struggle. Well, would you look at that? We won. Thanks to you. Actually, I'd say you pulled most of the weight. The Kingdom and the Church had a ton of grizzled warriors on their side. We would have been in real trouble without you and your mercenaries. You were pretty impressive yourself. You barely even broke a sweat out there. I appreciate the compliment, though. I'm glad we got the chance to team up like this. Me too. The war's not over yet, though. I'm hoping you'll stick around to the end. Of course. The Ashen Demon has proved a greater asset than we could have ever imagined. You must be relieved to see your gamble pay off. If nothing else, I'll be a lot less busy as your partner in destiny going forward. Hmm. What a thing to imagine. Urgent report, your majesty. After his failed charge, Dimitri forced his way south in retreat. He has fled the battlefield. And the Archbishop's right-hand man, Sedith, has escaped to the north. We've lost sight of him and his troops. Dimitri's the one to go after. Things will get complicated if we let him get away. We can move the fastest, so leave the pursuit to us. Just don't forget to send reinforcements, all right? I want the two of you to follow Claude. It's not that I don't trust him, exactly. I just want to make sure we're the ones who apprehend Dimitri. Leave it to us. Now that I think about it, there's something else to be concerned about. Where was the Archbishop? Where was the main force of the Knights of Seros? Rhea would have relished a battle like this, yet she was nowhere to be found. No. Hubert, let me ask you something. When the Archbishop escaped from Garrick Mach, we found no evidence of how she managed to reach this valley. Correct? Indeed. We searched high and low, but it was only by chance that we picked up her trail in ALL. That is how we knew she had entered the kingdom. Without that clue, she would have been in the wind. Just as I suspected. What is it, Ferdinand? Is Garrig Mach in danger? I fear so. There could be a secret path between this valley and the monastery that only the church knows about. And in that case, the Archbishop might be using it to stage an attack on Garrig Mach. It's certainly possible. Hubert, your thoughts? I will look into it. But I am almost certain that Ferdinand's theory is correct. We should assume this is the case, and take action immediately. Of course it is correct. Very wise of you to see that. In that case, we'll divide our troops. The main force will proceed with occupying Galatea. We'll lead the remaining third south to Garigmach, and continue our pursuit of Dimitri. There's no sign of them. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Just thinking how the time has finally come. Scarlet Blaze. The Hour of Vengeance. It's over! Oh, how I've waited for this day. The day that I kill you!
Run away while you can. You're free to try, but you won't get away from me that easily. I'll carve out your monstrous heart and put an end to the beast dwelling within. Your destruction is everything I've ever fought for! What happened to our mercenary friend and the Ashen Demon? They took the lead, did they not? Hmm. Strange. It is unlike them not to report back. Ill news, Your Majesty! Some kind of mages have assumed a battle formation up ahead and are poised to intercept us. Mages? It must be those who slither in the dark. But how? When they lack a proper army? There's something we're not seeing. Your Majesty, we've sighted our missing units in the middle of the enemy ranks. And I don't understand why, but they appear to be fighting each other. And that mercenary is clearly the aggressor. Hubert! So our cell sword has finally turned, eh? I hope we can solve this without violence, but if the worst should come to pass... You plan to kill her? But we've come all this way together. Perhaps I'm being soft, but I want to see how this plays out. Besides, we have to get to them first, and that means we must defeat the enemy. Leave this foul task to me, Edelgard. If our friend must be struck down, I will drop the blade quickly and with mercy. No, this task falls on my shoulders alone. Everyone stay on guard. We have no idea what's waiting for us. I will hunt you until my dying breath! Get back here! We have to reach them and put a stop to this madness! Let's do this! I have the slightest notion of what is going on, but I am happy. I'll destroy them all! Stay out of this! It does not concern you! This is like talking to a different person! I don't think we'll be able to reason our way out of this one. Oh, hang on, kid. I'm coming. I must move us away from all of these foolish distractions. What? They warped away. Why do you insist on interfering? They're putting up more of a fight than I expected. Deploy the reserves. I'll not permit this chance to slip away. to shoot the man. The others should have been here by now. Something must be holding Edelgard up. Your Majesty, we've sighted Claude pursuing Dimitri here in the mountains. The two of them are nearby. We need to get those who slither in the dark out of the way so we can send our troops. <laughs> I could take a lesson from your persistence. Find and remove this record. Your time for an interrogation later. You came for me, Gerald. Thank you. <laughs> you sound surprised, kid. I'm almost offended. If 
I must wring the life from you by my own hand, then so be it. Sacrifice. This world can never be made clean. Oh, great Saharas, veil of night fluttering in the abyss. By the laws of creation, throw wide your infernal gates and swallow my foes. Ever thought of maybe calling it a day? <sighs> You're a fine one to ask me that. Not a moment goes by without you on my tail. Hey, you stop running, I'll stop chasing you around. <sighs> Worth a try. It's a surprise to see you here, Dimitri. I wouldn't be, if Claude would simply deign to leave me alone. As if. You're the one who put yourself in this. <laughs> this is... No! <clears throat> It has been a long, long battle. My race wavers at the brink of extinction. And so it falls upon me to reclaim this world, that what was stolen from my people might be theirs once more. Which is why I was born. Yes, I created you. The cycle of the world, the rehousing of souls. How desperately I sought this secret art. But it demanded precision. One defect, one essence wrongly transplanted, would lead to consequences most irreparable. I knew I must oversee the process myself in order to save my beloved people. When my consciousness first initialized, I was nothing. I remember the sound of water, of bubbles, the sound of a massive object slowly lurching along. I thought the noise would continue for eternity, but then, a change. Something gave way. The water began rushing rapidly. Pale shadows closed in around me. Amidst deafening sounds, I walked desperately in search of light. That was an unforeseen accident. I was sure all had been lost to the waters. It was fortunate I had created you, for you proved useful in a way I never expected. I am to become you. That's why I'm here. That's why I've been compelled to remove any obstacle in your way. Only by destroying the abomination inside the Ashen Demon can we bring salvation to the world. So you understand. Then return that body you two share to me. It pains me to do this to you, but alas, all was written from the beginning.
scarlet blaze into the chasm. Where am I? Let's hold off on the weapons for now, okay? Probably best you don't move at all, actually. Wait, Claude? Hold on. What are you all doing here? I have the same question. It appears we've been swallowed up by some kind of strange magic. That was your doing, wasn't it? <sighs> when we came to, we were sprawled on the ground here. Charming place, if you ask me. Have you truly forgotten everything? You transformed and began attacking your allies. Thankfully, we managed to knock you out and capture you. But soon you awoke and fled. Those who saw you said you were like a different person. Hmm. I guess that kinda rings a bell. The last thing I remember is Arval telling me to slay the Ashen Demon. At least, I think it was Arval. Arval? The voice in my head. We've known each other for a few years now. Uh, huh. Sounds pretty out there, right? This is why I never mentioned it. And you claim this Arval suddenly decided to turn on you? I know how it sounds, but yeah. There are two things I can say for sure. The first is that Arval's magic is what dragged us all in here. And the second is that there's no one in my head anymore. How can you be certain? Because I don't feel them. At least, not in my mind. Arval's somewhere else now. Somewhere distant. Well, that's vague. How are we supposed to make heads or tails of any of this? At any rate, you appear more like yourself again, which we can take as a positive sign, and I truly do want to believe you. At the very least, I hope you know a way out of this fathomless prison. About that, I know I said distant, but Arval's definitely here with us somewhere. If we can find them and figure out what magic they used on us, we might just be able to escape. That sounds wildly optimistic. It sure does. But considering we don't know a thing about this place, we might as well give it a shot. In that case, let's begin looking around and see if we can't find any clues to where we are. to say, this isn't how I imagined Fodlin's three most powerful leaders would be coming together. Indeed. I hesitate to even consider the look on Hubert's face right now. I don't think anyone's too worried about me, though. Vanishing without a word is kind of what I do. So much for being a reliable leader. Or perhaps it's the opposite, and your people think you reliable precisely because you always return. It must be nice having friends you can depend on to handle important matters in your absence. And it must feel lousy to realize no one wants to do your job, Edelgard. 
I'm glad to see your tongue remains as agile as ever. Let's try moving our feet instead, shall we? Hey, I can do both if you want. It's definitely not an either-or kind of situation. So, Edelgard, say the four of us get out of here in one piece. What are you planning to do about Dimitri? Maybe we should join forces and take him on together. You're such a bore sometimes, Claude. And is that a serious proposal? Hmm. Well, I suppose it would be easier for me if the kingdom stuck around. After all, I get the feeling that if we divide Fodlin between the Empire and the Alliance, I'll be the one holding the short end of that stick. Our goal is to deal with Rhea and the Central Church, not to unify Fodlin. You never have been one to mince words, have you? Well then, allow me to match your honesty. It would be more convenient for me if the kingdom ceased to exist. The Central Church has a much closer relationship with Fargus than with the other regions. Even were we to capture the Archbishop and force her to dismantle the upper echelons of the Church, it wouldn't be enough. The roots of that organization run deep. Hey, hold on. You're just looking to capture Rhea? You're not gonna, you know, get rid of her? Is it not enough to subdue a foe and remove them from power? I'm just surprised. I would have expected you to be more... thorough. And here I thought you wanted to pursue a peaceful solution. Hey, give me some credit. If I didn't like to rock the boat, Lester would have been swallowed up by the Empire ages ago. I have ambitions, Edelgard. Real ones. I won't go into details, but I'm definitely fighting to make them a reality. All that, and you're not planning to enlighten me? Unreliable and stingy. I, for one, have no qualms with telling you my ambitions. I seek to destroy the irrational power structure that shackles Fodlin. Just Fodlin, huh? Come again? Hey, don't get me wrong. That's a goal I can get behind. That's why we're working together. But I'd be grateful if my own ambitions can be fulfilled at the end of your path of conquest. I'd like to believe that is possible. At least for now, we can work together to achieve a common goal. And perhaps someday, our pact will become a more permanent one. I hope so, at any rate. Same here. But before that, we need to find a way out of this place. Do you have a moment? Enough with the searching glances, Dimitri. Say what you're going to say. I was just thinking that I find it difficult to speak with you. Even now that we have the opportunity to exchange words peaceably. 
too many have died for us to suddenly have meaningful heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Oh? That's not how I feel. Unless you mean you don't wish to speak with the tyrant you consider responsible for their deaths. In which case, let's just believe what we believe, accept that our paths have diverged, and see this through to the very end. You're placing words in my mouth. Still, I suppose that does cut to the heart of the matter. I will not claim that all my choices were right, but I accept responsibility for them. I made them carefully and with full knowledge of the consequences. And I'd like to think I can say the same. But this is unproductive. We need to get out of here. Fair enough. But first, answer me this. Do you know what became of your mother and Selma? Why would I? Someone told me that you would know how she met her end. Although I suspect that was nothing more than the dying ravings of a madwoman. It was. I haven't seen my mother since I was a child. It would have been right before she was exiled. You would know what happened better than I. I suppose so. Regardless, thank you for answering. Now, shall we get back to finding our way out? Please, we can't resolve anything so long as we're trapped in this... was quite the tremor. Whatever this place is, I find myself liking it less by the moment. Can you stand? Yes, thank... <laughs> Perhaps we can put our differences aside, if only for the moment. The hostilities will do us no good here. Yes, I suppose you're right. I can agree to that. You know, I just remembered something from back when I was but a child. I had fallen to the ground and was met with a kind hand reaching out to help me up. I took it without thinking, without even looking first to see who it was. I suppose that shows you how much I've grown. Uh, uh. Dimitri, what is it? I have a similar memory. One of helping a little girl who had fallen in the dirt. Knowing you, such occurrences would have been commonplace in your youth. Don't try to imply we share a memory. No, I rarely forget an important face. Often to my own woe, I might add. Enough. Let us end this before we both make greater fools of ourselves. We need to escape. That's our only priority. Edelgard, I... What are you doing? You should know I won't hesitate to leave you behind. Indeed. I'm coming, El. forward from back in here let's try over that way maybe good idea it seems different from the rest of the void look out <sighs> so it failed has my skill degraded that sharply over the years Arval. I have been searching for you. An 
And look what you brought me. The three who fancy themselves sovereigns, ruling over that abomination's wretched spawn. What unexpected luck. I do hope you are all prepared to face death this day. So this is Arvel, is it? Undo this sorcery and return us from whence we came, demon. Oh, I do not think that will be happening. But even if I desired to accede to your wishes, the great forbidden spell of Zaharas is a one-way journey. None can escape this eternal darkness. I vote we kill this thing and see what happens. Who's with me? Something tells me they wouldn't lay this trap, only to suffer the same fate as us. If this being can free themselves from this void, it stands to reason that so too can we. Then try cutting me down if you like. Sadly, what you see before you is but an illusion. I have a task to fulfill, and once it is accomplished, I shall leave this place alone. Arvel, wait! What task are you talking about? Why did you use me? What are you trying to do here? Ah, uh, but you are mistaken. I am not Arval. My name is Epimenides, an ordinary man who vowed to kill the beast which set the earth ablaze. Do you not comprehend my purpose? I must save this world and its true people. That is why I chose to pass my consciousness down through the ages. And you, you are the vessel for that consciousness. What does that mean? going on, but I do know whoever that is needs to be stopped. And how far are you willing to go? Will you cut down your own friends to reach me? Hubert? No. It must be a double. If so, it's completely indistinguishable from the real thing. Vile sorcery indeed. The Emperor is before you. Deal the killing blow. You can't fool me. If it were really you, you'd understand. Dad, no! Don't do this! I can't believe you would hurt me. This is harder than I thought. I mean, how do we know for sure they're not real? Majesty, why are you consorting with the enemy? She is right where you want her. Why are you... No. This is a deception. The man I know would never raise a weapon at me. You would put your hands in the blood of friends to get what you want. I should have expected no less from the children of beasts.
Our surroundings have changed. This place is so twisted, you can't even tell where you are. Aren't you sad for your comrades, murderers? <gasps> there it is. There is your rage. Uh-oh. I can spot one fake, but how do I tell which Edelgard and Dimitri are on my side? Perhaps each of us should take on their own double to prevent confusion. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Let's try this. Let's see how this goes. Here I go. They must learn who they're up against. Not a problem. As darkness is a mirror for the soul. And once a soul is imprisoned here, it is eternally severed from the real world. Just imagine how much easier our task will be with the two of us. A nice thought, yes. But I'm sad to say I failed to trust even myself. Why are you helping the Emperor, wretch? If you mourn your friends, avenge them! It's a blessing I get to face you. There is truly no one I more desire to end. Illusion or no, I must thank our adversary for letting me experience that. Stop playing the kind soul. Everything we've ever wanted is before us, right for the taking. If you're really me, then you already know why I'm doing this. I don't like leaving my fate up for long. Is that all? Take a breather. I can't say it's pleasant watching my own death. Twin brother. That's the last of the illusions. So it would seem. At least now we're certain they're not real. We can cut them down without mercy. Again? Please tell me we're gonna find that guy this time. Right. Let's get searching. Oh, but you four are a marvel. To think you are already adapting to this place. Grace to lay down your lives and let the world you've torn apart heal. Ah, there you are, my partner in destiny. You're not our boss. And even if you were, I'd fight you all the same. Destroying me will achieve nothing, for you will all still be trapped in this place. Unfortunate, but you are forcing my hand. So even our mercenary friend gets a phantom. This is going to take all of us. Time to put our differences aside. Have to be you. I don't want to fight you. What is my true power? I'm unstoppable. No escape. Show me what you're capable of. I'll take you all on. Not often a gal gets to fight herself. I think I'm gonna enjoy this. Okay, I 
this myself. So be it. Come at me if you dare. Our adversary has finally run out of tricks. Time to finish this. Resist me so! You know my reason! The tomorrow we're fighting for! You are to me! It's incredible. Just how strong you've become. Orval. You have grown more than I ever thought possible. And yet... I've never felt more alone. like we made it out in one piece. Are you sure about that? I still have no idea what's going on. Arval, or Epimenides, I suppose, has vanished, and we've been returned to where we started. Perhaps we should just consider this a victory, an ironic one, as we achieved it by working together. Fair enough. So, what happens now? It would be foolish of me to permit either of you to leave this place alive. Yet without you, I'd still be in that prison. I'm not the type to dispose of someone the moment they stop being useful. That's not my style either. Momentary truce, then? Agreed. Let's consider all debts paid. But just to be clear, I crushed you once. And I can do so again. Sorry about that, Edelgard. I put you in a pretty bad spot back there. In truth, I can't say I much expected any of this. Still, it got us talking again, and that's gotta be worth something. Well, I should be off. I hope we can do this again sometime. The speaking part, anyway. I think I'll be on my way, too. 
My people are probably pulling their hair out by now. Until we meet again. Come, we're leaving. If my suspicions are correct, Garrig Mok is in grave danger. We need to hurry. Scarlet Blaze. A path forward. The Empire somehow manages to prevail over the Kingdom and Central Church's coalition, but Archbishop Rhea is nowhere to be found. Edelgard and the others soon realize the Archbishop aims to use Alel's secret trails to lead a surprise attack on Garrig Mach, so the Empire regroups and moves to intervene. Dire news, my lord! Huh? What now? What's happened? Another fire? Has a horse escaped? Don't tell me it's an assassin! Where's the body? Uh, no, my lord. Worse. There's a legion of soldiers closing in on Garrett Mach. We think it's the Knights of Seros. Uh, but we're safe in here, yes? My life is of great military importance, you know. Protect me! Put those troops Her Majesty sent to use! Count Varley, the enemy is inside the monastery. We couldn't hold them back. But these walls are thick! How did they breach them? The walls yet stand, my lord. But it appears they have made use of a number of unknown secret passages. Now they are inside and wreaking havoc, and it's only a matter of time before the monastery falls. We have the numbers to stop them, but that matters little if we don't know where they actually are. We must flee, my lord. All hope is lost. Urgent news, my lord. Spare my life, I beg you! An unknown army has appeared and started attacking the Knights of Saros. Her Majesty's reinforcements! Doubtful, my lord. This army wields large-scale magic and is also attacking the Imperial forces. The battlefield is sheer chaos. It's impossible to tell friend from foe. What in the blazes is happening?! Church or Empire, I care not. Eradicate them all. Engulf them in our darkness. It will be done. At last we can finally give the foolish descendants of those beasts the lesson they deserve. We will expose their filthy underground resting place and steal every last one of their essences. If we can breach it. The hole in the forest that the bandits raided was secured with a seal. Shall we deal with it after we take the monastery? Or tear this disgusting rat's nest apart? Lady Rhea, who are these people? They're attacking both sides indiscriminately. A clandestine organization that wields dark magic. Could it be? Have they returned to seek vengeance on Fodlan? But why show their hand now? Deal with them, Catherine. Not a single one of them can survive. They pose a far greater threat to our world than the Empire. Yes, Lady Rhea. Make way for Thunder Catherine! Clear a path or die! And that appears to be the current situation. The Knights of Saros are one thing. We came prepared to deal with them, and we can do so. But now you say those who slither in the dark have turned this into a three-way battle? Why? I am as baffled as you regarding a possible motive. Perhaps it was vital they seized the monastery before we could get here. If they knew we were engaged in a lengthy fight at ALL, they might have seen this as their chance. 
Well, they saved Count Varley's life either way. So be it. We will use this situation to our advantage and conduct a rescue. We can't afford to lose Garrig Mach or Count Varley. With one battle, we'll destroy the Central Church and put an end to those who slither in the dark. It's strange. I stopped caring about my father a long time ago, but the thought that he might die is... It's... He is not dead yet, Bernadetta. Unless you intend to be leaving him to his fates. No. No, of course not. I'm going to save him. If we're sloppy about this, we'll get dragged into the ongoing battle and suffer heavy losses. I would prefer to make this as easy for ourselves as we can. Let's find out what's going on in there, then look for the safest way in. I can tell you one thing. If Lord Arundel is here, I will choke the life out of him personally. I'll even let you watch, Your Majesty. Yes, just try not to overdo it. If that is settled, we will accomplish nothing more by brooding down here. Agreed. We'll begin the attack as soon as our preparations are complete. Thankfully, we're not too late. Count Varley is still holding strong. If the reports can be trusted, Rhea is here, and so is a mage that fits the description of Arendelle, which is to say, Talus. That puts our two biggest adversaries in one place. We should deal with them here and now. I suppose this is a fateful battle for you as well. Yeah. I know my power came from those slithering jerks, and I know they tried to manipulate me. But I still have so many questions about, well, everything else. And this might be my last chance to get some answers. I hope you do, or else Hubert might spend the rest of his life distrusting you. After what happened in ALL, he suggested disposing of you again. Not my favorite plan, to be honest. Looks like I'm gonna have to use this fight to clear my name. Indeed. I look forward to it. But just so you know, you've already proven that a dozen times over. Then I'm still a few dozen short. I gotta show you what the mercenary spirit's all about. This is my first time hearing of such spirit, but I'm eager to see it in action. Enough idle chatter, though. Everyone is in place. It's time to commence the final battle. We're gonna win. For you, for me, for all of us. And for a new Fodlin. One that'll go down in the history books as the best ever. It seems Rhea and Talus have both breached the monastery. And for the sake of Fodlin's future, we will make it there too. Where are the reinforcements? No. I don't want to die. <laughs> you should rescue Count Varley if it were possible. It will not be easy to find another man to wear the mitre. This isn't right! Why should I have to die? Somebody save me! I am the Bishop of the Southern Church, and you are obligated to protect me! Now do so, and be quick about it! I hope that keeps Count Varley safe.
alive. I mean, of course I am. My death would be a crippling blow to the Empire. The man is incorrigible. Someone keep an eye on him. We're not out of the woods yet. The enemy's wretched mage there has conjured barriers that are hampering my escape. I mean, my ability to fight. These infernal black walls are preventing me from reaching Lady Rhea. And now the Imperial reinforcements are closing in. Well, I'll just have to go intercept them myself. I don't have any interest in exchanging words with you. You attacked us, and that's all I need to know. is clear. This is the moment we've been fighting for. Rhea and Talus will be waiting just ahead. It's a boon that the Empire's two greatest enemies are both within striking distance. Yet we mustn't forget they are capable of anything. This situation could very quickly become dire. No kidding. We're talking about the heads of the church and those who slither in the dark. I hope you are all mentally prepared. Because once this begins, we cannot afford to waste even a second. Lady Edelgard, we await your command. Through some strange twist of fate, we find ourselves capturing Garrick Mach for the second time. Our first victory signaled the start of the war, and today's victory will be a giant step toward ending it. Today, together, we usher in a new era. And at the end of this path lies our future. The time is now. All Imperial forces, advance! Stand against me! Yo! 
Your reckoning has come, Thomas. Now you will pay for all that you did to my father and the Empire. Get out of my way! The enemies that remain are undeserving of human mercy. On your command, we will purge them with fire. I no longer care. For the sake of freedom, people, you must die. You're done! Laughable. Oh, you should kill me. Because I'm the one who's gonna kill you. Take this! Scarlet Flame. Consume the old world and bring light to a new age. You would brandish fire at us. We gave you those flames. <laughs> Foolish This land you seem to be. It's drenched in the blood of beasts. Fool I may be, but I have plenty of comfort. My allies and I stand ready to trample you into the dust. Impossible! I do not usually mix business or pleasure, but this is an exquisite opportunity to sate duty and vengeance both. It is my vengeance you will suffer, beast. And know how you have earned it! We dispelled the darkness. Now all that remains is Rhea. Fitting that I should settle things with Rhea here in the cathedral. No matter how many years pass, you people will always be little more than fools. Return the land you stole from us! I've got it. Sorry, but I think I'd rather fight you instead. I will correct the mistake I made when I took you in, by ending your life. What? No. How could you possibly side with the Empire? Life is full of twists. This wish is You have left me with no other choice. Watch over me, mother. So be it. I will crush you where you stand! Rhea can shapeshift too? That form! Then you are the Immaculate One! So be it! Today we destroy you and secure our future!
victory to the final god. Even at the cost of my life, I was prepared for this. We will prevail today. Even if it costs me the life that Her Majesty so graciously saved. I pray this fight is the one that ends this wretched war for good. Behold your undoing! <laughs> I suppose I can allow myself one day of truly Does giving my all. Need the blade breaker? Judge my chance to withdraw. I can't take much more. Watch this. Creatures, I will give you the burial you deserve. <laughs> Look out! I 
I will not allow you to sully this sacred place! Then die along with it! There's no way they could have survived that. Well then, just one thing left. Must we do this now? <sighs> but I suppose you earned it. Just this once. At last, Fodlan has been freed from that which bound it. Today marks a momentous new chapter in its history. And we shall be its authors. It is now 1183, Blue Sea Moon. The Empire has freed Garig Mach and put the Knights of Seros and those who slither in the dark to rout. Amidst the fighting, Archbishop Rhea and Tallis both go missing. With no one to lead, the central church's influence wanes, and those who slither in the dark vanish. As the Empire and the Leicester Alliance reaffirm their friendly relations, Edelgard prepares for her final battle with the kingdom, determined to see her vision made real. What an adventure we've had. Hard to believe it all started with one little dust up in the woods. We've seen each other through so many battles, and yet I know we've got a lot more to go. Chances are I'll stay and fight for this place, but don't hold it against me if I slip away from time to time for an adventure of my own. And while my future isn't set in stone, I know one thing for certain. Right here, right now, this is where I live and breathe.